Hello? Hello. Hey, you hear me now? I can. Good stuff. Yeah, so, you ready? <laughs> I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crack this iron brew before we start. Oh, yeah. what a perfect way to start. Well, usually what I do is I don't necessarily introduce the podcast. You know, it's just that we just kind of like start talking yeah, and yeah. then like before or whatever I can do it. However, That's fine. because you are a privilege to have on the podcast, Janvers, I'm actually <laughs> going to have an intro. So, hey, let's go. Yeah, let's go for it. So welcome everyone to the Stephen Lee podcast. Uh, this has been a big build up to get Janvers on here. I've actually, I wanted you on first and then uh, True tr- stole it. Would you believe that? So, <laughs> yoinked it from me. <laughs> yoinked, mate. Absolute taken. But no, it's, uh, it's amazing to have you. We had a little bit of a trouble getting all the, the trouble shooting together but you know together we shall prevail and we got it done all good eventually eventually yeah. we worked out my technical difficulties but yeah. we're here. we made it yeah for sure you would never know that like like you say the way that you dj is um like like you only hear like certain elements of the stream you don't hear at all all the output like no definitely yeah definitely. How, how does that work like are you not you're not self-conscious how does that work like not knowing exactly what's been played or i mean how does it work it's something that I've developed a skill for over the years because, like, no one place that you end up DJing has the same setup. So, oh, right, okay. You know, you go from place to place. I've played in nightclubs with the best up to specs, like, mm. systems where you've got PA systems beside you as well as, like, the big booster speakers. And then I've played in, like, the dingiest pub where you've yeah. like, brought brought everything yourself and, <laughs> and have nothing to work with. So well, That's I mean, good. Versatile, man. It's actually a good skill to have just DJing with your headphones because, yeah. you know, sometimes the speakers can be delayed or poor quality. So yeah, if you work with just your headphones, you know you're going to get the best quality and it's live. So mm-hmm. You're not entitled. Like, you know how to, like, deal with it, like, whatever's going to happen. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, in this in this freelance, like, DJ world, you've got to be able to, to yeah, deal exactly. with everything and anything. So <laughs> I mean, dude, like, you've actually, like, I, I love watching, like, your progress over the last year. Like, uh, COVID was obviously, like, a big, massive hit for any DJ or anyone that was ever in the club industry. Because, like, mm. it's just gone. It's, like, the first one to go away and I the know. last one to return. So has it even, has there been any return of clubs at all? Like, you know how there was easing of pubs and stuff? Yeah, not in the UK. Not no. in the UK, um, right. There has been. I mean, I, I saw an article yesterday about Wuhan. Um, yeah, I've seen a bit of that where, too. Where metal, it all right? started, and that's just like <laughs> mind blowing. And then obviously Australia and New Zealand, um, mm. you know, they returned just before New Year. In fact, they they had massive New Year parties. Oh and, my days! Uh, you know, I've seen the start of festivals returning there and stuff, and I'm just like, oh man. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, you're getting I, on a plane, ever, bro. <laughs> if ever there was a, a desire for me to be an international DJ, it's right now because yeah. I would actually get booked. You know, but. <laughs> no, I get One it. Day. I get no for but. sure, man. And like, I mean, you're, you're doing what you can with your with your Twitch streaming. Like, I adored uh, getting to see you. What, what was the uh the, the channel called again that you were on in like a whole on showcase? Friday? Yeah, on Friday night. Yeah, yeah. So it's this guy Arknade that Arknade, I met, yeah. um, through Twitch. So he's a producer from Nottingham, right? And um, he's quite he's quite new to the scene. Like, he's just broken through in the last few years mm. Um, mm. with some major releases, like on record labels like Crewcast and things like that which are big in the uk baseline scene so good stuff props to him for that but um yeah he was putting on this charity stream um on friday night mm. and it was actually you know a charity that means something to him because it's actually like a charity that supports a condition which he has himself oh okay so Brilliant. it was re- it was really cool um and there was 20 djs involved now i didn't actually know the Ooh. scale of it when he asked me because um, I thought I was just returning the favor because <laughs> I had him on my show for Hogmanay. Oh, um, right. So I thought he was just kind of like getting me to do one for him as well. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, yeah, I've got, just got the other like 19 sets. And I was oh, like, my God. <laughs> I was like, oh, my days, man. And he told me it was a 10 hour thing, half yeah. an hour each. And uh, it was great. He raised over a thousand pounds for charity. Oh, dude, that's um, absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, it was awesome just to be a part of that. And like, a lot of the other people on there were obviously big producers as well because he's just so well networked. Ah, and, you okay. Know, he's got all the contacts. Um, like, I, so. I rewatched your set today. Uh, like, mm. uh, in the shower, I put it on. I was fucking vibing in the shower, man. You know, it was great. You were filthy, mate. Proper filthy drum and bass I went, set. I went for it, man. Yeah, like, I did. I did. It's crazy it. because in, <laughs> in all the years that I've been DJing and, you know, before 
Twitch and COVID and all that stuff, like mm. way back at the start of my DJ career, I, I used to make mixes for SoundCloud like all the time. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had this thing where I'd make like a freshers mix every year and mm. it would just be filled with like house and EDM kind of. Yeah. Like, yeah. Most sure. Of the time. And that was like my roots. So it's always been house music and, and big bangers. But mm. I've always loved drum and bass. I've just never really mixed with it. Right. Okay. So that, that mix that I did for Arknade in, in seven or eight years was the first like purely drum and bass mix I've ever made. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Did like I, I grew up with drum and bass. Like it was the hospital mm. records was like yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I fell into that and it was they have that podcast too. I kinda joined it like I don't know, hundred and fifty podcasting or something. Um, the reason I remember that is because on the 180th episode, it was a Loungecore special. So oh. it, it was like, yeah, like Loungecore is such an interesting genre. It's like so jazzy. Uh, but it's just like the drum and bass jazz. But like, of course, they go 180. Like there was a whole thing. And I, I've always remembered that. Like I, I used to just have drum and bass on, on the bus as I would go into school. And like I used to do this thing on my knees like... You know, like, you just can't do that all the time. Rhythm. It was like, I don't know, it was just like how I, it was like a nerve tick thing, like, because I, I was not a confident boy in school. And I just used mm. to do that all the time, like, on my knee, even though I wasn't listening to drum and bass, it was just a drum and bass rhythm. I just had it all the time That's with me. That's unreal, man. Yeah, it's, it was... It's funny how you've made that, like, instinctive connection, you know? Yeah, just for your sure. Your brain, like, uses that to settle yourself. Yeah, almost. exactly. It, it's, I don't know, it's, because it's just, it's really nice rhythm and it's repetitive, but... Um, I don't know. Drum and bass just really like uh, tickle my fancy when I was mm. growing up, and I never have lost it. Like I've always, like I always ask you to play uh, the Nets guy Rusko remix. Like, yeah, you know? man, it's a banger though. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, but see that that's like the type of res- uh, drum and bass that like resonates with me the most because, mm. like I say, like I started DJing what maybe twenty thirteen fourteen, and that's when like house and EDM were kind of you know they just kind of passed their. Their peak, 2012, 13, was like yeah. when it re- really hit, like, you know, Tomorrowland, Dimitri Vegas, like, Mike, were just, yeah, like, yeah, sure. popping off, all those guys. But before that, it was drum and bass for me, like, because I'm old as fuck, so, you know, I'm, 27, <laughs> I'm 27 in April. Fucking but, ancient, mate, but you're way over the hill. But <laughs> back in the day, when I was at school, like, it was, I was sitting in my, like, standard grade and higher business management classes. I was rocking out to the Skrillex, like, Bangarang album, yeah, Chasing dude. Status, No More Idols. Like, oh, amazing. I yeah. used to have, because um, I used to listen to drum dubstep and drum and bass like mm, mm. all all the time and i was that kid that was like listening to that at school and people were like why are you listening to that it sounds like someone's car getting mot <laughs> and i was like yeah but look at me now man yeah 100 percent, man did i so, i got i got the same shit like people were always asking me why are you listening to this repetitive shit and then mm. um uh what was the, what's the song dj fresh uh, I forget what Gold it's called. Dust, yes, Gold Dust came mm. out and it blew up, right? And everyone yeah. was loving it. And I was like, "You guys realize what genre that is, right?" Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, because it, it really annoyed me. Because I mean, you don't necessarily know. I mean, I suppose if you have any awareness of the scene, you know who Hospital Records are and a lot of the yeah. artists, like say Nets Guy Spy and London Electricity and stuff. Like that, there's yeah. a lot of good artists that are just massive now. But like then, it wasn't as big. You know, it was kind of more. I don't know. It really depends. Like you would have known them, uh, but yeah, not the regular I mean, person, you know. So yeah, it was it's, it was great to get that. It's definitely more of an underground scene, like back right. then. Yeah, um, sure. You know, I'll never claim to be like an original raver or anything because I've always had that love for drum and bass, but it's never been to the same depth as someone who's like a true drum and bass like skanker. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, uh, and that's <laughs> why you know all those years and kind of in the middle between when I loved it like a decade ago and now there's just a big empty gap for me that i'm now having to like troll through and catch up on right okay so you know it's, it's a learning discovery and and every time that i you know play play drum and bass on stream yeah and get a good reaction that's huge to me because i was so nervous about making that mix because like it's just it's not something that i'm used to mm. and like people ask you know well you know if you're a dj and stuff like it should be pretty straightforward to just mix different genres but oh no it, like deconstructing drum and bass versus house music is, is such a different um you know mixing style and for sure used to playing double drops like you know that's what my insta was on um saturday when i posted some highlights it was like huge double drops that have to be in the right key and yeah just, sure you know you're layering bass on top of another and making sure there's no clashing vocals like i was never doing that with house i was just mm-hmm. doing quick 
quick transitions and flying into it. I mean, like, like honestly, that, so. like, listen to it. Like, you're just, you're so seamlessly putting it together. And, like, I loved, like, uh, you dropped in, like, little moments of, like, tiny temper. Where he's like, yeah, all right, yeah. let's go. You know, and then it goes in a filthy drop, dude. Like, see, <laughs> like, those wee bits are just so good. I adore moments like that. Like, whenever I ever watch your streams, you're always putting in some, fun, it's almost like a meme in a way. Sometimes you put yeah, in, like, almost. a silly thing, you know? Sure, and man, then it, it's that, like, because that's, that I adored that kind of stuff whenever I've been to clubs myself. Um, it's always been funny. Or, like, they yeah. they bring out, like, remember the uh, gimme, 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 I love after me. Now, like, of you course. know, that, like that song, like, when when that was put on uh, at that, was it Open Air Festival or something? Mm. Uh, everyone knew what that was. But, of course, it's just, like, a regular ABBA tune. But uh, people freak the fuck out. It's so good. Yeah. You know, because of... I don't know, it just like switches up the whole environment of it only having to be EDM or only having to be like a totally. certain way. I love that. It's such a culture. You know, it comes together. It's am- amazing always, to watch. That's what I've always tried to do, though. Like, I remember um, there was a spell where DJs were releasing remixes of like High School Musical and, mm. <laughs> and all that stuff. And I would just build a collection of those because... You know, it's something that people can really relate to and mm. they think this is probably the last thing I expected to hear in a club, especially because exactly. most of my sets are banging. So, mm. you know, you've just like had a heart attack after three consecutive heavy drops and yeah. then suddenly you hear the, the keys of High School Musical and you're like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and then once it starts building and there's a kick base behind it, people are just loving it, man. Yeah, it's for just sure. Like, it's just about providing that variety and something mm. that they won't hear from, you know, nine out of ten other DJs. Exactly. And, and like so that... people they'll obviously remember that. Like it will be yeah. like a main point of that set. It's like, oh I remember when they like yeah. the, a friends remix or something, you know? So yeah, something I mean, crazy. I've got one of those too. <laughs> I've, got, I've got one for everything, but... everything did. I love it. Do, like do you remember like the whole like YouTube craze of like trap remixes as well? Oh yeah. Do, like yeah. does that still happen? Do people still even care about trap? Is trap still a thing? I, I think so. I think like because again that that's one that happened as well. There was this guy, oh what was his name? Like, I remember oh, like, like the crusty crab ones and like yeah, you know. there's like the most the most popular trap artist man, and he does like um, fairly odd parents and the Simpsons <laughs> and um, love it. A- oh, Attic Stein, that's his name. Shout okay, Attic Stein. Yeah. Attic Stein. He, he's got them. He's got them all on SoundCloud, and he's got the classic like producer's little sample at the start, so nobody can rip it off, or it goes Attic Stein. Oh yeah, of course. So like, <laughs> yeah, audio jungle like that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. No, I love that, man. It's always it's always been something of a fascination for me to like troll through SoundCloud and just see what you can find. Like, oh, I don't yeah, know, man. like even just like like it's not necessarily uh, EDM music, but um, mashups. Like uh, mm. whenever you get all those songs, and I always remember this one that my big brother showed me, and I still listen to it today. I think I uh, was playing it like like three days ago, like loud as fuck in here because I'm, I've got the place to myself. I can just play music, which is so good. Um, that's a vibe. Yeah, it was uh, Oasis, Travis, Eminem. And uh, Green Day, all in one oh, song. Um, that's so it was a like, mega mashup right yeah, there. it was so good, but it works seamlessly. It's like Green Day, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, um, uh, Wonderwall, uh, of course. Um, of course yeah. they, they go so well together, it's, it's unreal. Do and then just have other songs, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, I never heard of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but then, like the Travis song, I can't remember what it is, but it like it, it's it fits so well. And then the end song is Sing for the Moment by Eminem. Um, mm. So it, it like just goes out in a bag. It's so good. That's sick. And like I can imagine, like there's like the DJs kind of like that as well, right? You're always like trying mm. to mash up things. You're always yeah, like pulling, putting things together, and I adore that. Like, see, so yeah, actually, like watching you today, um, and then like obviously we have built this up a little bit, like thinking about it. Um, mm. I would like I want to do more because I remember I was talking about that before. Like I want to get Sleepy Thunder back and whatever. Um, yeah, like yeah. The, my music channel thing, but obviously that's kind of fucked now because of copyright. <laughs> Like, yeah, man. like I can't necessarily upload shit like it'd be used to. Um, it's crazy. It's put a, a complete dagger through the industry. Like, yeah. In terms of small creators like you and I, um, mm. so it just creates a level of uncertainty as well for everyone. How do you um, deal with that on stream? Like, are you been deleting vods or what's the crack? Yeah. So initially, I kind of just thought like, fuck it. Yeah. But, <laughs> mm. uh, kind of saw sense because I mean I've not had any strikes or anything, and it's probably because I took action. Um, all right. All right. Yeah, I I don't store VODs anymore, um, with the exception of the pre-parties, which I do for Killer Instinct on a Saturday night. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is partly because Elite likes to keep his VODs up, obviously. Mm. Um, 
and his vods are integrated with mine so he'll like stream my set on his own channel as well ah uh, um, okay so therefore to avoid that i kind of need to play like permittable music so uh -huh. we just kind of came to an agreement that i would play monster cat songs initially. oh okay that's um, good which is fine with me obviously lots of different variety yeah for sure in terms of of artists and um bpms and stuff so i can do a different set every week mm -hmm. and I, I... it's also uh, yeah go on no I, was just, I remember like monster cat growing up man like that whole mm. thing like uh what was is it walking talking stephen hawking or something yeah yeah walking, yeah. Talking. Yeah, yeah like that guy um i remember when i when i first got twitter uh i added him and said dude i, I fucking love your music like it, it's so good to get to talk to you in twitter just like i'm so new to it you know i was a wee boy you know uh -huh. and he actually liked and replied and i was like oh my hey, god like you know go. complete stardom uh i i don't i don't know what account that would have been on if i'd a terrible amount of Twitter accounts now talking about it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> One of your recycled ones, anyway. Yeah, for sure. Uh, actually, I went back in some old tweets recently, man, and Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, I mean... Oh, God. Like it's... My, my personal account's definitely got stuff that I get in a lot of trouble for. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I found this, like, thread where I was like, you know what, guys, I've been thinking a lot and I really want to become a football manager. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and there's this whole this uh, whole thread of my mates ripping the piss out of me, and like I I didn't realize then they were ripping the piss out of me, but now I look I back and it's imagine, it's mate. oh god, you know it's like football manager problems is what they kept hashtagging me with. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. oh god. You got yourself man. in a right hole there. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is like 2012, 13. You know, yeah. like really early days. Crazy man. But yeah, Monster Cat, like they've mm. completely like how big is their catalog now? I imagine it's massive. Oh mate. I mean that's been one of the biggest things for me because I signed up for Monster Cat Gold, which mm. is just so cheap. Like it's less than five pounds a month, I think. Um, right. Okay. Because they charge you in Euros, which is weird. Mm. Um but yeah, it's it's I got it when I was doing my gaming streams because you know it and you know, even over summer last year before I converted to doing the DJing, I was doing my quizzes and stuff. Mm. Um, and so it just allowed me to play some Monster Cat like bangers before the quiz, like just to kind of you know warm people up. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, without worrying about strikes and stuff. Love so, those quizzes, man. <laughs> yeah, they, they were a good man. Like I might bring them back one day. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. I get you. But yeah, like Monster Cat was just so good. But again, because I only signed up like around about then, I was backdating like hell. Like mm. there must be around about. 6,000 songs on there or something like that. Oh, man. And and, and that's just the ones, because obviously, Monster Cat have a huge library, but some of the songs aren't um, for creator license. Um, So only, only like, well, I'd say about 80% of them are licensable. Um, oh. Some of them don't actually fall under the license. Ah. But what you can do on the website is you can filter it by licensable only. So oh, that's just, great. Yeah, then you can just download them. So, like, um, were they were they ahead of the game? I assume, like, for oh, DMCA yeah, stuff. Like, so. they, have they always? Yeah. Uh, when did they actually put that in? When was the? Like, um, I don't I'm know. not sure specifically, but you know, I really respect what they've done because, yeah. like, not just from a recent point of view, but Monster Cat have been very much their own style since day one, and they've never ever thought about really selling out. Like, mm. they've just. You know they've stayed on the edge and they're happy to be on the edge right and, and i really respect that like they play to their to their um fans for sure um and then with the the whole music thing i heard a lot of people like mostly people that had just hit affiliate complaining about uh monster cat licensing you could basically purchase affiliate i don't know if you ever heard about that no that became a thing so basically it was like fast tracking if you bought a monster cat gold license it basically granted you affiliate status oh. i'm not i'm not quite sure why that was but tw tw twitch basically made the move to partner with monster cat to do ah, that okay um but honestly like a lot of people were whinging about it because they like worked really hard to get affiliate and i get that because mm -hmm. i've been there I, you know sure i've been there like everyone was below 50 followers at one point but yeah 100 at the end of the day like the service that monster cat provides you for that money uh you know like to pay that you're literally paying one month's worth to get affiliate like i don't see it as being such a big deal as the fuss that people kicked up about but yeah i can imagine listen each to their own i just think like people were focusing too much on what you were getting from a twitch perspective rather than focusing on what monster can actually give you for your money like, yeah okay okay you know i mean you're getting endless and endless amounts of music for for very little uh, yeah for sure 
so I think that just detracted from the quality of service, which I thought was a shame. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other, like, uh, I don't know, I've seen, like, on Spotify, there's, like, DMCA free playlists, right? And yeah. I've noticed, like, uh, Ajunja, is it Ajunja Beats? Uh, the guys... Anjuna Beats, yeah. Yeah, Anjuna. That Anjuna. Mm. Like, th- those guys have, like, their own big playlist. There's a whole bunch of trans stuff, though. It's a bit different. Mm. Um, and then I saw UKF has their own one. It's, like, UK- UKF X Twitch is what it's called. Oh, um, I which is cool. That. Yeah, like, there's some mm. actually really good drum and bass artists in there. Like, I was, because, mm. I mean, like, it's always been a stereotype, copyright free, royalty free, whatever. It's always been subpar like most likely compared to mm. if you're like uh like a full copyright full yeah. record label song like it's going not going to be as easily to compare them you can t- quite easily tell which ones are all too free uh you know what yeah. i'm saying like it used to be like that but it is, has changed significantly especially yeah. like as we've been forced to do so um mm. even night mode like jericho's label have you seen that like that's uh no. like jericho the the streamer american guy yeah. um yeah, I know him. yeah he's he's like made a label i don't know how many songs are on it now it's probably like 20 or so he's released two eps i think or two uh, albums Nice. And um, like because he was a streamer, he obviously made sure that it was okay to stream it. Yeah, um, that's cool. Yeah, that's like that. and like it's some some really good artists in like a whole like uh, wide array of genres. I think that's so essential when it comes down yeah. to like you don't want 100%. it to be. I like, I actually like uh, Harris Heller as well, like that stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't, I've never never really listened to him. I'm not gonna lie to you, but um, uh, Harley kept telling me that he was annoyed there wasn't enough like metal and rock and stuff that was DMC yeah. free. Which yeah. I can understand. I mean, that's a bit weird. Like, it's a lot easier to make it, like, make music on a on a laptop or a PC, or whatever, and make that DMCA. Yeah, but like a full on band being DMCA free, mm. like, I don't because usually bands look for like a record label to sign them, right? It's well, like yeah, a, they need it. They yeah, need it big time. Exactly. Like my, my my friend Ewan, like he's always been like back and forth in bands as well as uh, Kai. I, I don't know. I don't think you've met them. I think we've been in close vicinity. But I think I've played COD with Ewan before, but All never. Right. Okay. Yeah, never Kai. I don't think. Have you been in his streams? Maybe. No. No. All right. No, uh, I, don't, I don't believe so. Hitman was his name. Uh, you might have seen. Uh, he changed his name. It's like K C Mr. K C Show. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't realize that's who we were talking about. Yeah, I've been in his streams. Before. Yeah, I didn't. Re- yeah, is so, Casey Shaw's current name. Uh, Mr. Casey Shaw, I think, is his current name. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've not sure. Seen him stream for a while. No, he hasn't been live in a wee while. But like him and you and stay together. So like it's like ah, they. Okay, cool. They they used to stay in Paisley with uh, another band member who ended up being a dick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> fucking band politics, that, like, man. That's the staple of fucking bands is it not there's always one <laughs> yeah it is dude i remember like i it was when i came back from america um so 2018 late 2018 um i was in the subway uh, underneath like glasgow and mm. uh kai came to meet me because i had some some spare time i was going to stay over at richie's or whatever and he said like uh you just since you come back to scotland let's go have like a wee meal together and stuff and on that night um is when he found out he was like being kicked out of his first band uh, called North Atlas at that point, um, mm-hmm. and he, he like for no reason it was just like they had some brothers in there and they ended up like falling out and not like the brothers went on one side and the other band members went another. It was absolutely kerfuffle. And then yeah, so he was really down. But then the next time I saw him, he joined another better band called Take Today. Uh, and I was so fucking happy with for him. I was like, dude, I'm so because he was like really down. He's like, I don't think I'm going to pursue music anymore. I'm not really feeling it. You know, he's really fucking off. And then he got back into that. And then the same fucking thing happened. <laughs> no way. Yeah, exactly, dude. Like two two of the band members went off, and the problem was is his flatmate knew about all this, but didn't tell him. Mm. So Foxy. yeah, imagine like for like two weeks That's they were toxic, talking about it. Bro. Yeah, so they ended up obviously there was a massive like uh, feud within the flat uh, of like, and the guy ran away to his girlfriend and all that, and I was really disappointed in the guy because he seemed really sound when I met him. Um, mm. But then like you don't do that to your pal, do you? Nah, you can't. You've got to. You've got to say like I think the band's kind of talking. You know, maybe you're not pulling your weight a little bit. But I think he was. Like it's not. I don't know why. It was just toxicity and like uh, unjustified. Uh, yeah. You know. Uh, but it, it is what it is. Um, and then uh, it's a lot better now. The reason the thing I'm getting to is just the fact that it's now only you and Kai. Like they moved to another flat, and I'm so grateful because they'll really support each other and like get, make yeah, each yeah. other work better. Um, which it's is important. Yeah, for sure. It's it's kind of I don't know. I think you always run that risk, right? If you stay with the people you work with, 
or you have a passion with. Um, yeah, 100%. It's the same as the relationship, bro. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. I That's why it. I've just got cats, you know? Is yeah. it? <laughs> Never let each other down. <laughs> yeah. Well, you say that, man. My fucking Brody takes shites wherever he likes now. I'm fucking even mon- <laughs> launch him outside. Fucking. Honestly. Oh, mate. Yeah, that's oh. the ideal. Oh, dude. It's, it's, no, it's been rough. You need to clean it up. He ain't gonna do it. <laughs> I know. My mum's not here. Mom! Fucking cat <laughs> shit. You know, it's like, oh, just me. All right. Uh, just throw it up till post-COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like washing, you know. Yeah, mum, there's a whole bunch of shit out there. You clean it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> lovely to see you, Stefan, after that's... all these months. Oh, mum, pick up all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, man. Oh, I no, don't know. Funny. No, it's it's it is, man. Like my mom and dad right now, they're, they're selling the house and all that stuff. Like, have I told you on stream? I think or I don't know. I think we've. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been been mental, but like it sounds it, like it's been an ordeal, man. Yeah, because everything was swimmingly going together well, and it was great. I was like, everyone was like super happy. It was uh, bought, and you know everything was going well. And then just after Christmas, uh, there was like just a wee discrepancy, and the people who are there, the people that are buying the house are selling their house to get right. it. Um, and they there was like a gar something wrong with their garage. It was like the council weren't happy with some planning permission or something. And because mm. of COVID, it's like oh Jesus, it's a three yeah. week delay you know yeah. so they're just waiting kind of twiddling their thumbs uh staying at one of my mum's friends like rented to apartments so i'm oh, not so apartment that's like a wee really, cottage but yeah. really set you back because like you say there's just like it needs to be utterly essential work for them to actually carry it out within any like feasible time exactly know? for sure and like the thing um, was is like they completely cleared like my childhood home like uh it's done like there's nothing left mm, in there so they, were ready. they can't even think about moving back in there like there's no yeah. there's no it's just an empty shell of a house now so it's a bit Dude, weird that's such man. a sad image i know i know i mean the thing is though is like I, I i thought a lot about this like i feel like i already had accepted leaving that place when i moved to glasgow so mm. I, I don't i don't feel that bad about the fact that i'm not going to live there anymore um like you'd already semi-detached yeah right? exactly hey, i see what you did um <laughs> no no but for for real like i almost feel like this house here that i'm in uh is more in the family because like literally the family's had this for like 60 years like if, yeah I like from my granny granny granddad it yeah. went way back that's so awesome man. exactly man so it's actually like to see thinking about it, it's mental because my mom grew up here so my mom would have been a baby Gee. and then grew up over here and now i'm staying in it it's like there's a lot of you know, mm. c- culture and ties here. Yeah, but that's deep. Yeah, it is, and like you feel it at times, man. I don't know. There's something. There's something odd about just like the way. I don't know. Like the light hits some things. Like you think you see something, you know, and you're mm. like, "Oh, is yeah. that like a, a cat from before?" Or like there's like my granny used to have bunny rabbits and stuff, and it's like I don't know. You just you think you see things. It's weird how your mind yeah. works and your your memories kind of like put things in your head, but. Man, I don't know. Oh, I'm just going fucking mental because I grew up and are even yeah. still standing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> shout out Mumbers. Yeah, shout out Mumbers. Dude, I actually wanted to talk about Mumbers. Um, Let's dude, do it. she is unbelievably <laughs> supportive. I adore that woman. Like how much she does for you and Joe. That honestly, that is superb. What, That's crazy. What, what a what a wonderful woman, bro. Like how how did you tell her about Twitch? How did that all come together? Like I wanna. Well. I mean, I had very little to do with it because she was already fully integrated. I think a VIP in Joe's stream. But yeah. <laughs> um, well, honestly, like, I mean, it, it goes way back because Joe, Joe's been streaming for what? Uh, near, probably like two and a half, three years now. Yeah. Sorry if I got that wrong, Joe. Um, but like, you know, he's he didn't tell me about that mm. for the first th- three to four months. Right. So there's there's people that have been sub to him for longer than me, and I'm like, bruh. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, I was going to speak about this as well. Um, it, you're my second longest uh, sub on Switch ever. Oh, let's go. And um, you were the first person, obviously, out with my family, out with Joe, that I ever subscribed Aww. to. So big ups on that, man. Thank you, man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, are. like Joe's just been streaming for that long that I was like, how are you gonna let me be like? third longest sub bro like what are you gonna do to me like that <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah you need to make other I, people pause their streak so you could get up <laughs> and i think i think mumverse knows like how that feels as well because she wants to be the longest like she lives in the same house as him at least i live somewhere else yeah she exactly. lives in the same house and she's not even as long a sub so oh dude, i just i love yeah. how integrated into the twitch culture she is like dude, like even just little, little emote things like uh, yeah. if i like she knows what cap is and like paul get, I know, like because like i know like that's very basic but like my mom has no idea what a cap is no idea what yeah. a pog is you know no nah, like feel 
straight up, one of my um, new viewers came into the stream um, just last night, right? Hmm. And they're um, just just shy of 40, shall I say, right? So my mum was spamming Pepe D in the chat last <laughs> night. And, and my mum had to explain to this other woman what Pepe D was. And I was like, <laughs> yes, mum verse. I was like, let's go, dude. Is there ever better, like, an example of how integrated she is than her explaining to someone younger than her what yeah Pepe what Pepe D like, is oh that's so, so good funny. dude like, I love she's that she's just the best man she's got great like, banter as well like she's she's one of the lads does. in there you know yeah. it's so good man like, oh because my mates all tried it at the start you know like mm. saying all this about my mum and that and some people will do it as well like randos coming in off a raid they'll be like trying to dish it out to mumverse and the rest, yeah. the, the rest of the chat will hammer this person. Yeah, like, exactly. Mum versus back, <laughs> For like, sure, man. And, but she can handle herself, don't get me wrong. Like, <laughs> yeah. She's got the comebacks. I can imagine, dude. Yeah, I yeah. know. Like, she, she's always, like, uh, whenever I, I jump in your stream, or, like, Joe's as well, like, whenever he is live, like, you, you just... You, you feel like like she's got the copy pastas down, dude. Like she she's yeah, ready for it. You know, she's got the pe 100%. the pe peppy uh, Jedi's up. You know, yep. all that stuff, Cat man. Verse. Yeah, Cat Jam verse. Oh my days, dude. Cat Jam verse. <laughs> I like. I just adore that. That's your creation, bro. I think. Well, I, I kind oh, of. Jess, maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, how it worked is I rated her, and then uh, she rated you. But we were trying to think of what to ah, come in with it. You're right. And we yeah, yeah, we were yeah. all just like spitballing, and that's what we all came up with. So it was a co-creation. Yeah, exactly. You know, but it was so good. Like cat jam verse. Like, I've got that thing. If you put, is it just cat jam? The like, command. Yeah, the commands. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's like got the kind of cool, like uh, I don't know what you call it, like fancy kind of bars. It looks yeah, really good, man. I don't know how to. It's so yeah, awesome. oh, I'd love it, man. That. Catch on, it works so well as well, you know. <laughs> it does. I wanted to like create my own emo out of it, but it just like there's no top mm. in Cat Jam. So, oh, like, I know. You know <laughs> Dude, like, I don't want to take away from it. Oh, on the on the Valorant um the Discord, they've got like all the different like uh, it's like Cat Jam, but it's like put the characters like uh, defining features on it. Oh, so, really? <laughs> yeah, like there's like a Sova Jam, and he's just got like kind of longer hair, and he, it's That's just hilarious. and he's got like a, a wee cloak in the back. It's so cute. Um, and it's just it's really nice. Like um, you yeah, can it's it, it's hard to kind of edit it. Like uh, putting a Santa hat on it works. Like for Christmas. Yeah. Um, I recall seeing. Yeah, of really. course, dude. Everyone keeps shouting at me that I've still got Santa hats and some of my emotes I right now. I haven't changed them all yet. Uh, oh, I mean, like I did it on Twitch, um, mm. and like Frankerface and Better Touch TV. Uh, but it's an I, effort, though, man. In Discord, it is. Yeah, it's a it, lot of emotes. It's so annoying. I kind of wish you could like save emotes on Discord for seasons. So yeah, like, like deselect them or something. Yeah, just have them exactly. So it would be like yeah. beside it and you can just like click which one. Because even like Easter emotes, like some of them, you know, you can mm. like, like have kind of silly things for that. Oh, Come on, on Discord, listen to the podcast. Yeah, exactly, Get dude. That done. <laughs> <laughs> like Halloween and Christmas would be the most obvious, like for pumpkins and scary stuff. Yeah, and absolutely. then Santa hat. But yeah, I, 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 don't, mean, I don't know. <laughs> I only just changed my Discord profile picture from the one with the snow, like and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's only just gone back to regular in the last few days. So yeah, I have my actual official like uh, if you sub to me emotes that still had all the Santa hats. Um, mm. But I was able to change that quick. Uh, I don't know, like I don't know how you get it. Do you have that thing where you can just instantly change the emote? Yeah, yeah, yeah I've got that. Oh, it's so so much handier, man. Lifesaver, man. Oh, dude, like mind you, just have to wait like eight days at times. Yeah, just, it was oh, brutal. It's crazy. Especially when like COVID first hit, because there mm. was so many people jumping on Twitch. And, yeah, like, sure. The amount of emotes they must have been getting submitted was, must have been absolutely insane. Yeah, un unreal, man. To ah. review, so nah, it was a good call with that. Like as long as they pick trusted people that have you know had reasonable emotes in the past. Yeah, it makes sense. Exactly. I'm always scared that I accidentally like violate something and I lose it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't Just think I'm like, this. Yeah, emote. I know. I know. The thing is, though, is like you could so easily just put something like terrible oh, yeah. on there, and oh, like yeah, they wouldn't could. know until. How would they even find out? Like, did they check it anyway? Like, eventually, or? I wonder mm, if I guess like, it would just have to get reported. Yeah, I suppose. How do you even report? See, this is thing on Discord. You can't report. You know what's that? You can't, like, if someone's no. an arse, like, if you right-click, you can't report. There's no report really? function. Just block or yeah, something. Yeah, just block, which is mm. weird. Like, you think, you know, you should yeah, be able to say, like, look, this guy's a bit toxic, dude, you know? But yeah. I, I don't, I don't know why. Pretty much par for the course normally with socials these days. Well, that's it. Being able to report. Yeah. So, uh, I, I want to know, like, I always mess this up because I'm a fanny and I don't watch Twitch enough, right? When's <laughs> your actual schedule? Like, when's your exact dates and days? Like, yeah, uh, so... Or tight. Currently, 
currently it's um it's actually just changed it's the same days but the timing's right. changed on one of the days so okay tuesday night every yeah. week we have house tech and bass music cool usually from 9 p.m till 1 a.m right right um it's always a 9 p.m. start, and it's quite often later than 1 a.m. finish. <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh, my God. The, the minute turns, my... you're like, one more, one more. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, my streams never finish on time. That's just the way it goes. Oh, I love it. Um, and then Friday is the next one, and that's just like an all-round bangers open format set. Um, mm. Recently, like I say, it's been gravitating towards drum and bass because um, that's what I'm just into at the moment. And yeah, my sure. crowds are really vibing off of it as well, which is great. Yeah, man. So Filthy. Friday, 11 p.m. till 3 a.m. Right, um, which is just to mirror what I would be doing in the clubs anyway. So okay, I'm quite I'm quite lucky in the sense that I get quite a good base of viewers from both here in the UK slash Europe and also over in America slash Canada as well. Yeah, sure. Um, so those timings do work. I mean, it's still hella early for most Americans, especially West Coast, but mm. it gives them more chance to tune in rather than exactly 7 a.m. drum and bass. You know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then Saturday's the same. I do 11 p.m. till 3 a.m. And I also do the pre-show, like I say, for Elite uh, mm, as part mm. of his show, Killer Instinct. So we do a party from around about 8 till half 8 of Monster Cat tunes. Um, okay. But we've also managed to change that up this year because one of my favorite record labels, uh, Night Bass, which is owned by DJ AC Slater um, over in America, they have just permitted their entire... Night base released catalog for Twitch Ooh, use as well. Let's go. So that's another around about six hundred plus songs of oh my days. Gar- garage, bass house, all that kind of stuff. Um, fantastic, dude. So that's a heads up to anyone else that's needing more music. You can get their playlist on Spotify, and it's all free to use. You'll need to give me all these links, man, so I can spam them. Hundred percent, bro. Yeah, 100%. for sure. See, uh, do you have a track list? Like, how does that go? Because the amount of times I've been in there and, like, uh, I'm like, ID, ID, please, ID. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> like, you should... Like, how hard is it to make a proper track list? I can imagine you... Uh, how many well, like songs... Stream, yeah, like... I, I can, on Spotify. I, I suppose... Uh, I, I really... Like, what you would have played on stream so that you know mm. what, what it is. Oh, okay. Like, how hard would that be to even just make it, like, a like a live thing, saying what song it is? Is that... I don't know... How, how that works because I imagine you're mixing and does it have like a title that you can maybe like make like a window capture or something like yeah, saying what song so it is I don't know I've seen I've seen DJs do that before mm. um, where they can sort of relay their um, screen as it is so like they might have the waveform going across with the titles and stuff yeah but I don't know I'm just kind of snidey like there's almost an element of because I've got a lot of like exclusives and stuff that people ah. will send me or or stuff that I know other people don't have. I like having it as my own. I get you. <laughs> I get you. No, that's cool. I mean, I mean it's, it I means that there's like a, an extra angle for people to tune in because, yeah. like, you know, there's going to be an exclusive. I, I, yeah, I like that. I mean, like, whenever Fartbox is in there, uh, big Fart Talk oh, oh, shout yeah, out. He knows like, them all. Yeah, he knows yeah. them all. Yeah, dude. They, that guy's great. But don't get me wrong. Like, you know, people ask me what song it is. I'll tell them. Yeah. Like, that's mm-hmm. fine. It's just, I'd probably rather that than have, like, the thing up the whole time. Yeah. No, I understand. It's just, I think it adds to the, you know, because it also means that people can't see what's coming up next as like a preview kind of thing. Because mm, mm. um, if you're showing your screen the whole time, then, you know, they're seeing you browse through your library and like load up the next track. I like the anticipation of people yeah. hearing it through their ears for the first time. And they're like, you. oh, shit. Yeah, you know, like, sure, sure. That's that's what I want people to, because you wouldn't get it in the club. You wouldn't get like IDs and stuff. So yeah, I'm trying to be you're as right. close to that as possible. I, I'm just I'm just thinking like, you know, like Radio 1 when Friction used to do a show. And now it's like, what, Rennie LeVice? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like that, what is it, Monday, early, late Monday, so Tuesday morning, I think it was. Mm-hmm. It was like, like I loved uh, listening to that and just having the Radio 1 uh, now playing thing up. So I yeah. could just like see what it was. It was all just a massive mix, but like you could... Just like p- pick whichever one was coming up, and then be able to get on yeah, Spotify or whatever. Yeah. I-, I remember like trawling through YouTube and like only finding like cuts from radio because it was so new. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like I used to just record it as well and upload my own. I like it was good, you know. But they'd always have to like he'd talk over like like uh, uh, even if it's on a drop, you know, he'd have to like wait five seconds and then talk over it. And he's just like, I'm so sorry, but I need to talk over the- so that you know I can imagine. Nobody would, yeah. 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 I still remember one of the funniest moments. I was actually at um, the Rival Club in Sterling. It was at dusk. Right? Rival. And I'd, I'd just gone out on a night out. And I remember being there. I was standing at the bar. And I just heard over the top of the song. It just went, 
BBC Radio One. <laughs> so you could tell that the DJ had like live ripped it, and I was like, Oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> cringe. I was like, That is my actual worst nightmare. Like, imagine yeah, like downloading a song and then finding out that you'd got a fucking ripped version because you're yeah. just a, a wee pirater. Oh, that's <laughs> rough. That's yeah, well, yeah. What's the? I remember you telling me before, like you subscribe to another thing so that you can get songs. How does? Yeah, so, well, What's that called again? What's the, How does that work? It's called DJ City, and right. it's available in the UK and the US. Okay. Um, and it's just the same plan that you pay for. Um, I was quite hesitant about getting it at first. Um, right. So I never really used it back in the day, like pre-COVID, because, again, it's what I was saying about like having exclusive edits and stuff. I didn't really want to play from a record pool. That's like how it's kind of known. Right. Um, because everybody signs up for that and just plays the same ones. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So that's why I actually avoided it was to make my sets different because mm. although the edits that are on there are exclusive to that site, so many DJs were using it that it was almost the opposite of what it was intended to be. <laughs> right, you know? yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of how I separated myself from the pack back mm. in the day. Um you gotta you gotta find ways man. Alive. but now now i do use it because it does have a lot of useful tools um in terms of like it has transition edits so you might be playing at a certain bpm and somebody will have pre-made like a transition edit from 100 bpm down to 80 oh um within ableton so like you don't actually have to you can drastically change your bpm vibe in your set within one track mm. using that okay um so those are really useful obviously um and it just supports the people that have made them. Yeah, and, for sure. The lot, you know, it's that, interesting how it comes together. Yeah, it's just it just gives me more options because it also has a lot of like um different genres like R and B and grime and all that kind of stuff, like yeah. Limbaton as well, like Latin music. Mm. Which normally, you know, if you're forking out ninety nine P per song mm. uh, on Fuck. on iTunes if it blows up, you know, mm. you're better off paying twenty quid a month and just having unlimited downloads from this yeah, like exactly. pool. So yeah so that's why i find useful no it's, um, it's super interesting because like people that listen would have no idea that's how it works they just assume i don't know like they just buy it you know like uh mm. buy individual songs but then if it's you think about that common like, questions i have on stream is right. where you get your music from mm. um so i literally just created a command because it takes me that long to explain it <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> um I, i've just done that now so yeah no that's smart that's smart no, it's it's always interesting to see it do you did you remember there was like a moment where um it's like techno bunker on spotify and like the ai would mix it itself yes do you yes, remember that remember shit that, that yeah, was so I cool <laughs> like I've, is I've that getting people... any better have you seen like, when I've been gigging, I've had people saying, can't you just play that off Spotify? And I'm like, bro, this is not how that works. Yeah, like, dude. <laughs> I can't just pull up Spotify. And I mean, I think people do do that now. Oh, but man. Like, that's, like, that, that's worse than push and play, in my opinion. Because like, yeah. y- you're, you're letting uh, an actual robot do it for you, and you're just like completely posing then. Because you know, like, mm. like, you know never, I don't know, like Steve Aoki gets fucking like, shit because he just pushes play and then dances on his decks. Like, yeah, or whatever. I mean, like, that's not... DJ, is it? I mean, that's. Yeah. I mean, like, I. Mean, I that... To be honest, if I ever got to like Tomorrowland, trust me, I'd be up to answer on my desk as well. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, but you'd be you'd be mid doing it. Like, I understand yeah, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of downtime in DJing. Like, uh, mm. if you're like, I don't know, it's like it depends on what you're mixing, I suppose. But like, you're mm. not always doing something. Like, I get no. that. Like, that's of no. course you're not. Like, uh, that's like anything. Um, but yeah, like you all have time to jump up in your decks and dance, but then you're like, oh fuck, 100%. I need to mix this. So you're like, all right, you come back and then you listen, you see where you're going, and you just like, that's it like the biggest worry I ever have on stream is when I go for like a toilet break or to mm. get another drink. I'm like sprinting <laughs> yeah. back with it so I don't miss the transition, and I've never done it yet. So that's let's good. go. That's um, that's a lot of hours of DJing to not miss it. So right on. Yeah, it must be actually. It must be quite a lot now. Yeah, I mean, like, fuck, like, how? When did you start properly DJing, like, all the time? Because you were doing it half and half. Like, were you, or was it mainly gaming and quizzing? And then you, when did you yeah, even start so, DJing? Actually, to think about that. Uh, what, like, ever? Or well, no, no, no. Was that was that like when COVID happened? You really started? Yeah. It was, yeah. Well, actually, I was quite late to the party because COVID, like, sort of broke. Like, my last gig was like, I think mid March, maybe. Right. Um, but I never started DJing on Twitch until the end of July. Oh, right, okay. So I kind of had three or four months of just slumber mm. um, because nobody knew what was going to happen. Sure. Like, if I'd known I'll be yeah, out of work yeah. for a year, then, yeah, I would have done it straight away. Yeah, exactly. But I just kind of took the laissez-faire, like, option and thought, well, I'll be mm. back working soon, you know? Yeah. Or, like, 
you know, I, I mean, I can understand it, man. That you, you know? no idea to know, but you still started, and you've really taken it by storm. And like everyone, yeah. ever like I always know, I always say like to you, like whenever I raid you or if I am recommending you, like you know, it's going to mm. be a hype raid. Like it's a good yeah, raid man. to always go for, just because you know, whenever you're just a regular streamer that plays games, you never know exactly what's going on. You might be playing marbles or you might be playing Stardew Valley. Mm. You know, they're very different things. So, yeah. like, especially for me, I'm like, fucking esports marbles, let's go! You know, freaking out. And then Stardew Valley and just chilling out fishing. So, you know, but for I mean, you, it's going to be banging. It's going to be good crap. Yeah, people know what they're going to get with my stream. Like, exactly. I genuinely get questioned now when I'm drinking water. People are like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that's how predictable my stream is these days. Like it's got it's gotta be hard and heavy and there's yeah. probably beer involved. Like Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh you got cans of tea, man. Dude, I love that about yeah. the keg. Yeah. Yamber keg, represent. dude. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely begging for that tenant sponsorship. Oh, Come you'll on. get it. You'll get it. Keep keep pushing, mm. man. Cause like yeah. I can imagine like is there many Scottish DJs that you know on Twitch? There's a couple actually. Right. Um I, I follow a few, but it, it's really hard like if people don't advertise that they're scottish yeah in the, in the title or anything it's quite hard to come across them yeah for sure um i mean the easiest one i ever had was a guy i think his title was something to do with gbx and he had a whole bunch of like bright lights on in the background i was just on the browse page and he had literally like a big tartan flag in the background <laughs> and i was like yeah okay this guy's scottish yeah exactly it'd been hilarious if he wasn't i know <laughs> But yeah, there's a couple of guys. Um, there's a guy called Murray DJ. Uh, okay. That's M W O R E Y DJ. He's from Dumfries. Uh, just discovered him quite recently. Right. And at, at first, I thought he just did like afternoon streams because he tended to be on like between two and six. Right, right. But then there was just the other night I finished and he was like an hour in. And I was like, bro, it's like 4 a.m. Like, yeah, fuck it. Let's get so I, don't, I don't know how he does both because I'm dead to the world when I get up after a stream. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, like you did a, was not, how long was that? 12 hour DJ set? Like you did, was it longer yeah. than that? Yeah, fuck, yeah, I did man. My fir- did my first ever 12 hours. Um, that's crazy. I've done a 12 hour stream. Yeah, that's very different. I mean, that's the longest DJ set I've ever done at all, let alone yeah. on stream. Uh, Exactly, man. I think that's a world record on Twitch for one person. But by far my, away, mate. <laughs> my longest in a club was, was eight hours. Oof. Um, because in Edinburgh, you always play the festival, which was nine to five, and that was rough because literally yeah, <laughs> nine to five, but the other way around for most people. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's, you know, that was pretty long. But 12 hours was, I mean, I was... Your ears must hurt, man. End. Like, just like wearing I mean, the headphones yeah, as well my, and just blasting my ears, tunes. My back, I was getting old. Oh. Like, <laughs> oh, well, no, I think anyone's standing... Because you, you do, you, your arms are obviously down. So you're yeah. like, you're slightly leaning over, I can mm. imagine, whenever... Especially like if you're like bending down to like see the screen or whatever. And like, th- there's so much movement in the <laughs> DJ set, you know? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was quite bad in terms of that. I just... That was remarkable, though. It like, was well more done my for mental state, man. Like, right. Like, I stay up for so much longer than that mm. all the time. But just because, like, your brain's actually so focused on one thing. Yeah. Um, In terms of, like, you know, you're, I'm fully concentrating in, t- in terms of actually getting the songs in time. Yeah. And making sure I'm reading chat for that long. It was quite, quite yeah. intense. And then, you Look. know, I was just wa- waffling utter shite towards the end. <laughs> like, mate, I think I was playing, like, do you remember the fast food song? And, like... Uh, uh, pizza. Hut, yeah, pizza yeah, 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 yeah. I was playing that shit. Like, what the <laughs> fuck, man? I was playing that with like Love it. two hours to go, and then <laughs> my mate James. One hop said, this time. <laughs> yeah, like, literally. Scoffed, man. Yeah. Oh, that's my mate James great, had gone to bed the night before. Are we human? He... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. He was he was up for work, man. Like Oof. having his cornflakes, and I was like, fuck it, and just threw on some like. 150 BPM dubstep. Like, yeah, that's like, Let's go. He was like, I've just <laughs> spat my cornflakes out, bro. What are you doing? Oh, that's amazing. Dude, I can't imagine, like, even just dancing for that amount of time or, mm, like, you yeah. know, never mind actually focusing and making sure transitions mm. were well done. And, oh, man. I mean, I've had, like, uh, my longest stream ever. I mean, it's obviously not DJing, so it's very different. It was 32 hours. And, like, that's... the... Like, uh, once you're hitting the 20s, you've already lost your mind. Yeah, you don't know 100%. what's happening. So I was completely delirious. I was dancing to, like, proper weed music, man. I was, like, mm. you know, I was gone. Um, yeah. I don't know. Hours is just, I don't know. I think I could stream for 24 hours. Yeah. I have stayed up for 24 hours. I definitely couldn't do it for 32, man. That's, yeah. That's just... I, just, I, I don't know what happened. It was just, I just kept going. And you get to a point where sleep, like, your, your state of mind is not, you're not tired anymore. Mm. You're just dull. 
It's like yeah. a weird space, man. Um, yeah, and that, that fucked up my sleep schedule for like five days after that, though. Oh, like, 100%. Uh, you can't sleep properly. You sleep for 17 hours, and then you, you wake up, and you're like, okay, well, you how don't do know I... what day or Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know, man. And, like, I obviously was drinking, because when it, when I hit 24 hours, I popped champagne. Mm, so yeah. <laughs> I did that. So, I mean, like, that that's still, what, like eight hours after that. So I've tanked yeah, some champagne, I mean, having a few beers. Like, you are you go drunk, and then you come back down again. And then like you're still going. being drunk after you've been awake and streaming for 24 hours like yeah. that's gonna affect you differently as well exactly so. man it's mm. not healthy man like i don't actually like 24 hours anymore like even yeah, no, seeing people do it 12 hours I, is enough joe joe did the exact same because he did a couple and then he was just like actually nah this ain't it like, no exactly <laughs> it's not it like i think it, it's glorified like it, it mm. shouldn't be 24 hours like people always say like a subathon even like i i did one for my birthday um but realistically um after 12 hours I had another, I think it was like four or five hours to do. And I was like, look, it, it's already 11 p.m. Uh, if I yeah. keep going here, it's going to be like dwindling content, dwindling energy. And like, yeah. for what, <laughs> really? You know, so I just carried it on to the next stream, like uh, after I sleep, yeah, yeah. you know, and then... then Quite right. So, I mean, that's <laughs> that's kind of the best way to do it, I think. And People still get the, the time out of you, so... Yeah, exactly. I think like... I mean, DJing's a different task um, because you're obviously so focused and you're blasting music all the time. But twelve hours is very doable as a variety streamer. Like you mm. can, you can very much do a lot. Like you just switch it up via games, like you know, three hour blocks, yeah. four hour blocks, or whatever. We just chat in sessions and all that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, or like you can have a pot noodle, you know, and yeah, just, just chill take out. A break, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or watch a video. Like, but you're not doing that. Like DJing's just such a different task. Like, because you have to take so much energy. You're carry. You're the head. You're the spear. Like for that entire stream to keep the energy going. And it's like whenever I've tuned into you, you're never quiet. You're never relaxed. You're always like dancing yourself and fucking right into. I do my best, man. You got to. Ins- if you're not having a good time, the rest of the people can't have a good time. Exactly. So. Yeah, for sure. You're leading the I way. Like to inspire. Yeah. You no, know, and you, you really do. And I, I love your ability to just like uh, not be stuck in one genre, or you're you're, mm-hmm. very, you're not stereotypical. You're very uh, unique in the way that you DJ and present yourself. And I fucking love that, dude. And Thank I also you, oh for sure. And like I love the way you've uh, you've upgraded the background as well in time. Yes, like well, is it yeah. wouldn't be like it is without the community, man. Like right, right. so much love. Seriously, it, mm. like it's been a process because I started off with. You know the bare bones I, I made a bit of investment myself i bought like the microphone and yeah, a sure. laptop stand and the lights came uh, a little bit later i just bought the like the actual stand which my deck sit on now mm. um so you know there was a couple like 100 quid maybe yeah thrown sure into all with the tripod and stuff um but then the community came in big with the lights they came in with the uh, mic stand so you know like yeah props to them 100 percent I love the on-air sign as well in the background. Yeah, cool. I just got that for Christmas, actually, from oh, my right. girlfriend's brother. So ah. that's just a little addition, you know? Like, it's nice to keep building it. That's cool. Like, you, you get Let's a proper neon light. My mum bought me a little wooden plaque that says live streaming. <laughs> 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 but, you know, it's a thought that counts, right? Uh, 100%. <laughs> I've always wanted one of those, like, a proper thing that I can just switch that goes, like, like on air and it's on the door. Yeah, or it's, it's dope, man. Like, yeah. it's, a, it's a little bit cliche, but I don't mind it. Like, no, it's good. I mean, you are on air. You're, yeah, it represents you're, you're what I'm making doing, a show. So, so for yeah. sure, I totally get it. Like, uh, I've always wanted like a neon light in the shape of like a Steph Love, like my moat. I think that yeah, be, that would be cool. I don't that'd know. Be really awesome. Like, I, I remember researching like how much custom neons are, and it's like Jesus so Christ. expensive, bro. And they're so, so fragile too. So yeah. And like knowing me, I'd end up dropping it. So like, I don't know if I could get like a little one, like a teeny little mm. one. You know, just something to have in the background. Um, I'll see you in time, I suppose. But I'm still it's in funny my... because, like, that would be so much more personal to you. And yeah, I see people with, like, a baby Yoda that costs, like, 30 quid. And, like, people are like, oh, my God, that's so amazing. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, like, come on, man. Like, how generic. Yeah, I know. I, I, did you see the baby Yodas on top of Christmas trees? You see that? Oh, my goodness, that was no thing. way. Yeah, well, I mean, I had a tenant's can, so I can't really speak. No, but... dude, dude, tenant cans are the way to go. Like, uh, <laughs> my, my my big brother and I, um, when was it, 2018 Christmas, uh, mm. we didn't have a tree, so we just made one out of a tenant's can and then cut out, like, we had another can and cut out the tea and put that at the top. So, it, and then sent it to tenants and they, like, well, loved awesome. it. The, like, the, it was on Facebook and stuff. Uh, it was fucking Love amazing. It. We still have that. Well, Richie has it somewhere. Um, you could put, like, a wee candle in it because, like, it was just, like, one side of 
of it was cut into a tree. And the bottom was like just still the bottom of the can. So you could put a candle in there and then it would light it all up. And it was lovely. That's dope, man. Yeah, it was cool, man. Uh, I actually... kind of similar actually to like an, an idea I got from one of my community um, for a new design is like to have um, empty alcohol bottles on like a shelf, but mm. with like fairy lights inside or something yeah. just to like light them up and have that as a background but the problem is obviously i'm renting right now so we can't just go like punching holes and yeah. like putting up shelves no um, i get it man but definitely like once we get our own place that's mm. something i'm really hoping to have like in my backdrop because i know people like the highland cow for now so yeah exactly yeah no it's always good like is it not an artist that you know as well is that not yeah it is it's um one of jenny's favorite artists so yeah she's got like She's actually got more than one, mm -hmm. but only one of them appears on stream because I take it down and put on my logo instead. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, you know, you got you got to got to push your logo out there. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's Stephen Brown. So Stephen, Stephen Brown. Brown's artwork. Right on, right on. No, 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 that's brilliant. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's been so good to get to see like like because I remember was it just a dark room you used to have or what, what was the crack? Mind yeah, you? I mean, it was literally just. Um, I think I had like a lamp sitting be below me to right. like illum illuminate kind of the decks area, but mm. the wall the wall was just plain white. Like it was yeah. simple, which was good, um, but it, it wasn't good quality at all. And I got you. Just having just having the lights makes such a big difference. Because... It was it's much more an audio experience then, but now it's like a full yeah. package. Like I feel whenever yeah. you go in there, like you know that this is, it's a show. Like it's become something a lot bigger than when it was six months ago. So. I, I just feel fortunate to get to see you improve that much, man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. Like, For sure. It's, it's been actually quite, I don't know, humbling Like to see the growth because mm. I think in my first six months of streaming games, I had like two or 300 followers. And a lot of that was due to connections I already had. Like, right, right. You know, from you and Muse and Joe and stuff. Yeah. So I wasn't actually getting a lot of organic growth in terms of like new viewers. Mm. And that's very much still the case like i'm very much you know um growing as a result of of networking but sure. that's how it works but just like having people coming in and like commenting on because obviously djing for me was a face reveal as well if you remember oh fuck then. yeah i remember that yeah <laughs> that was that was huge for me and obviously that plays a part being more interactive and stuff yeah but, sure um you know it's just been insane to see like people coming in and saying such like nice things all the time um you know and it's not just that but i'm getting like actual djs coming in now as well sometimes yeah yeah like um, i like you know. seeing who you raid because you always tend to mm. raid like similar people and like i yeah. never really thought about djs on twitch like it was because mm. it's not necessarily something you immediately think you think of gaming right or just chatting and then you get to see like i, I don't know if it was you that raided them or if i just found it myself but it was like some some german did um mm. uh and it, it was just it was such a an interesting way to like experience other music as well and just i don't know like it was like compared to like youtube live streams but they're not really yeah. live streams they're just playlists being played compared mm. to like a dj like a, on twitch that's interactive like it's so 100%. different you know yeah. and the thing is as well is you don't get to talk to djs in clubs it's very mm. much like you just hear things i understand your dance and stuff so stuff people try their best oh possibly. god yeah but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah play ass mate yeah that's good like, uh, uh, those kind of guys yeah i've seen that one um play uh, this one it's my birthday play this one before i leave in five you, minutes yeah exactly Fuck, Do just leave now <laughs> like uh I, I went to sub club with joe uh before mm. and like we were there to like four in the morning and it's mental how close you are to the dj because it's like he's right there or she's right there um, that's a box i need to tick I've, I've never been have you not oh my days no my only well i've been to quite a few clubs in glasgow but yeah. i've just never been to sub club i guess it was kind of um like i've only just gotten into like heavy techno and stuff like right. recently you know um mm. within the last year or so it, it just never really uh, presented the same appeal as like swg3 oh uh, yeah sure, Ar sure obviously arches back in the day yeah um so it's just one of those things but like 100 percent, i want to be going uh when i can yeah man i mean it's gonna be well until that opens up again i think right especially with how close it is apparently there's like a 400 yeah. people can fit in there apparently i don't understand yeah it. that's crazy yeah it's like it's like that whole boiler room vibe you know mm, like yeah, low is. ceiling um intimate venue and like yeah. that's cool like I'm, I'm getting much more attracted to that idea mm. as i guess twitch has kind of converted me to that style because like I'm not used to playing up to a crowd. Like, yeah, when I'm in the club, I'll have a boogie and stuff. But like the crowd aren't 
at a barrier facing you like right. when you're actually booked like i'm just playing to a club right tucked away in a corner or whatever um you're not really the main focus but being on camera with twitch you are like you, yeah if sure you're not, like i said earlier if you're not having a good time other yeah, people can... will just tune out and go somewhere else yeah so, exactly so that took me a long time to get used to like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still not like i was telling you like earlier um I still trip over my words all the time when I'm looking at the camera just because I know that there's X amount of people like, <laughs> yeah. waiting for me to say something dumb. But, um, you know, I've definitely grown more confident, which yeah. is great. No, I mean, like, yeah, it doesn't come across that way. It seems like you're really on point. You have the confidence. Like, mm. uh, even if you did mess up something, you're, you'll have some banter for joking yeah. with it, you know? Like, you're... I mean, yeah, it, yeah, I'd say it's like 80% 80, 80 for the music and 20%, well, maybe even more for you. I would say 30% like just for Yamaras and 70% because you are got a really good creation of music. Like, the, mm. they're there for the banter as much as the music. Like it's, Yeah, that's what I want it to you know, be about. Yeah, for sure. Because I, I love it, like, whenever you come in and like, yo, what's up, Stefan? You know, what's going on? <laughs> like, it's so cool. Like in, God, I acknowledge the homies, man. Yeah, dude, I love it. I love it. But also, I feel kind of bad sometimes because you're in the middle of a mix. You're like, oh, shit. You know, and nah, like, nah, nah. <laughs> you're like, you go over to, like, type in chat. It's like, hold on a minute. You know? <laughs> Everyone has, like, their own take on that. It's, it's a tricky one because, like you say, you know, some people will be playing Warzone and they'll be in the middle of a fight, and it's just timing dependent. You yeah, know, with sure. The raid, you, you get so lucky, or you don't. And yeah, like, there's not much you can do about that. And it's the same with DJs. Like, if I'm in the middle of a mix, I don't want to like fuck it or take away from a big drop. But yeah, I don't wanna yeah, yeah, yeah. Just make it look like I'm ignoring a raid. Like it's it's tricky. No, no. Um, I mean, like I think people understand that. Like if yeah. if if they don't, they're entitled, man. Like whenever mm. I whenever I raid Muse and he's in the middle of a firefight, like on Fortnite, yeah. like that happens all the time. It tends uh, to be pretty often. I, yeah, I've been there. honestly, <laughs> yeah. like all the time. Uh, so funny. <laughs> and like he's a hard hard W gear, man. Yeah, yeah that's it, bro. He's right in there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he's always like, I love you, Stefan, but I can't look right now. How are you doing? You know, and he's like, and I'm like, don't die. He's like, don't look at me. Like I'm just spamming a chat don't look at me you know? i don't <laughs> Which, know how he does it man i know I he's, did. he's like one of the most interactive streamers whilst playing like top level yeah like you know fortnite like, champions league stuff right he's really yeah. far up there dude yeah. he's doing so well like i i don't i don't uh tune in enough like it's usually with raids or i'll jump in like um when i can um but yeah he's like whenever even just like him joining devour as well like the yeah. org and dude, I'm so yeah. proud of him. He's really been grinding. Killing like you, you, and, you and Muse, I both look up to with uh, your grind. Like your your pure like uh, commitment to keeping on going and just in innovating has been unreal over this uh, like last year. You know, it's so, very mutual feeling. But um, yeah, we're all homies. I love that. Like whatever Muse is, you tend to be an NT, and like the vice yeah, versa. It's always good. We like we like cutting in the same circles. Yeah, you should ha you should hang out with people that you you think are you know respectable and yeah. You know, I think that's what we all do. We all, you know, respect each other, and it doesn't matter what field you're working in. Or, yeah, sure. Or, you know, what you're trying to represent in your own stream. Like, Muse will come in here to my stream sometimes, and people will be like, Muse, when are you next streaming? And he'll be like, mm. he'll just literally say, like, something like, I'm just here vibing with Janverse right now. Like, yeah, yeah. No attention. Yeah, no exactly. Attention to what they've said. And, or he'll just, like, whisper them, you know, because he doesn't, like, mm -hmm. he's not, he's not got any ego at all. He's the same person that, he was when I, you know, found him with what five hundred followers, like right. A, a year well, were you the first one to find them? Like I'm trying to remember how I knew um, him. I was probably through you. Well, Jinx and ah. uh, Night Trick both um, ah, met him before I did. Okay, okay. But then, yeah. So he had like a core of moderators already, right? Um, and then I kind of got invited along mm. once once they realised because I was a bit, uh, I don't know, I was a bit different to the rest of them at the start. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually they found out that i wasn't like because i was like obviously i've got a lot of dark humor i used to make <laughs> i used to make jokes sometimes but then they just kind of realized that I was all right um, what the fuck are you saying <laughs> uh, nah, nothing, nothing, nothing stupid it's just like i don't know i'd make a like funny joke that i'd heard like that day and they'd all be like yeah well... tumbleweed like <laughs> Uh, I mean, I don't know, like, whenever I join, like, there's obviously people that know what the fuck is going on in Fortnite. All I know mm. is that I'm a decent sniper in Fortnite, right? And I, are, I think, man. like, I haven't played it a long time, though. But uh, what, what... Still clips on my channel to prove it. No, let's go, exactly, dude. <laughs> dude, I adore that stuff. Um, but I there's think... also Sarah killing herself as well. Oh, my God, dude, that was hilarious. Because, do you remember, I, I pulled remember off... I what those things were called. 
Uh, some. Uh, for, I know. I know what it was, but you're, you're like you were just like, yo, you should move. You should move. You should yep. move. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, the fact dead. I was spectating it as well. Yeah. It was so perfect. Oh, do, do you remember that time when it was like uh, 2v2 and you got knocked and then I killed the two guys and then killed myself with a mine? I do. Yeah. I remember that very well. <laughs> oh my god, dude. I was so like, pissed. I'm popping off. I'm popping off. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't even, I, I had no idea what happened either because like, I didn't know no. it was, I, I was a thing. Oh, bro. That, there's probably, so many good moments like that. I like that. Yeah, I mean, that, that almost makes it, like, funnier, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Than just if you'd killed them and just rezzed me. Like, yeah, yeah every, most people do that every day. Yeah. <laughs> Not everyone does it Steph in style. You know? <laughs> exactly, man. You got to entertain. You. I think the first time mm. I met Muse was when you invited him to a Fortnite game, and he was steaming. Oh, uh, my God. And they give you still popping off, because he's just, like, ingrained in yeah. it. Yeah. About yeah. like, like he was just like I, I love you guys. It's so good to get to meet you. You know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I haven't played Fortnite with him for a long time, but like I remember yeah. he used to just join my lobbies and like me and my three mates would be like, no, me and my two other mates would be like running around like trying to loot, and he'd be on the other side of the map with nine kills, like just pushing. <laughs> and I'd be like, this yeah, is man. quads, and he's just out here wiping teams yeah. on his own. Like, he's got full build battles by himself. Honestly, it's insane. Unreal, man. It's very different, that game, though, too, right? It's all the maps are all changed up, yeah, new seasons change, and stuff. changes all the time. Yeah. No, it's... it's too hard for, like, casual gamers like us to keep up with. You yeah. Know? Dude, I haven't even played COD in, like, two months. You know, I've mm. just been... I, I, was, I was watching the CDL yesterday, though. Uh, it's back... Um, the like the Call of Duty League. So yeah, I've seen quite a lot of hype about it on Twitter, but it's not really a scene I've ever like followed too highly, which is unusual. Yeah, yeah it, it like I didn't either until last year. Um, mm. I don't really know why. I think it was just um because I was home uh, because of COVID, uh, and I had more time, and then I realized like uh, I didn't follow that many pros. Um, but I followed like Optic Hex and stuff. Um, yeah. So like, and he owned Chicago back then, like Chicago Huntsman, and that has like that's like one of the best teams, like Scump yeah. and Formal and stuff, and M Boy back then. So it was like a really like, that was I remember Optic versus Face. That was the biggest thing. Like that was, that was like that you know, was my peak era, man. Yeah, dude. Like that's like for sure. And they've got that back now. Like, do you know the whole mm. the whole thing that Hex uh, bought back Optic? Yeah, I heard stuff. about that. Like it was changing ownership. Yeah, things, but... yeah, which is so cool because now the green wall actually means something because it was weird because Optic was still a team and Huntsman would verse Optic and it was weird because yeah, it was that's... like the old Optic OGs were versing mm. their namesake from before, which is really weird. Um, Jeez. But now no, it's good because it's like Huntsman doesn't exist and it's just became Optic. So mm-hmm. it's they kind of migrated it. But now um, 100 Thieves are playing in the Call of Duty League as well. And right. the owner of 100 Thieves is Nade Shot, who is also an Optic. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're, they're yeah. playing today, actually, uh, at 11 p.m. Big they're playing. Rivalry. So, yeah, it's going to be so cool like, to see who wins. Um, but yeah, it was my, fun. My, my Call of Duty comp knowledge pretty much stems back to as far as people's names being given to the shots that were being taken so like you'd have like um what was it called like the temper shot and stuff like that ah. like Face temper had like a shot dedicated to himself because he created it and oh stuff like cool that. Did, that's, you... that's about as far as it goes for me see i i literally knew nothing like it was from last year is when i started so mm. like i was learning through the casters like the history or like the little montage videos that we'd make like yeah. you know like to build up stuff um, but I love the whole casting as well. It got me inspired to want to do casting too. Um, and there's this one caster who I'm a total fan by of called Miles the Ross. It's just everyone calls him Miles. It's Miles the Ross on Twitch. And right. I jumped in and I was like, "Yo, uh, like, what's going on?" And he only had like 30 viewers or so, so you could actually speak to him. And it was of so course. good, dude. Because like I expected it to be thousands of people because he mm. casts to thousands of people. Like on right, a right, right. Oh no, the final, it was like, you know, 200,000 people were watching. So, and he's That's casting mad. it. So, like, but like, whenever he's like just chilling out playing some samurai game, you know, it's just him it's and just, like his homies. Yeah. So, it was really cool. I got to find out like one of his parents is Scottish and stuff. And like, I found out where about, like, from. And we're just chatting shit, you know, it was good. Like, that's just class. to, like, I think that that's the beauty of Twitch as well. Like, whenever you, uh, you can actually have a chance to integrate with people. Um, yeah. Which is really on point. But by the way, your your Discord's like n- notifications are coming. Oh, oh, like, you can hear them. I don't know if you want to just. I don't know if you can change that. But yeah, uh, I'll mute that. Yeah, I think it's like was it like notifications or streamer mode? I think would turn that off. But uh, yeah, there you go. I did it again. <laughs> did it again? Yeah. <laughs> it's alright. It's alright. It's just um. Has you it know, been going the whole time. 
No, like th- there was one earlier. I'd say about twenty minutes in or so. But all right, I think Hopefully if you just click will. streamer mode, it should mute it, right? Yeah, it's on now. So try right, it. Right, right. I think it should be on. Apologies, everyone. I'm so popular. That's right. No, that's, it's just so popular. No. Oh, oh wait, God. they're coming from your server, Steph. Why are you why are you spamming chat for? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Dude, like people keep adding me like <laughs> uh, for stupid stuff, um, which is so annoying. I'm thinking of like, can I remove the app for me? <laughs> Like, Imagine. it's becoming like a copy pasta to at me for stupid shit. And it's just, oh, like, because I, like, before when it was my birthday, um, Peter uh, wanted to mm. make a channel of just my birthday. Um, yep. So, and I would only open it on my birthday. But it was there I for was like there. two weeks. I yeah. Was there for that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. I Like, did you see the video as well? I did. Um, yeah. I, like, uh, it was kind of hard because of DMCA. I had to mute it on stream. Um, yeah. But it was fucking amazing. I was so proud of him, man. Like, I was greeting. Like, it, it was so it was much. Awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, it's just like they were all just like spam atting me because yeah. it, like I would you talk about the fact. I couldn't do anything. Uh, but I muted the channel, but it would still have the little red bubble. Yeah. And it would like uh, at me uh, whenever I was on Discord. And it was just so annoying. <laughs> but I mean, like, I'm very I mean, privileged. But, you know. <laughs> once everyone like had posted their wee message, it just descended into chaos. Yeah, it because really did. People were just posting utter shite yeah. to annoy you. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite was... lucky in that sense that I've managed to avoid like the meme community within my right. channel. It's, it's like, you know, there's a lot of people. <laughs> you know very very capable of causing such havoc but yeah yeah it, it tends to happen in other places which is nice <laughs> <laughs> and then you can join in there yep. yeah yeah no i get it right there. <laughs> it's always cathartic to have a bit of shithousery man i'm telling you it feels good man 100%. <laughs> like uh even i don't know i don't even have necessarily a memes channel on my discord it says silly things mm. like that that's yeah. about it um because i don't know if you if you say memes it kind of spirals um, mm. I don't know. It depends. It depends on what you're like. Uh, I'm trying to think of like, even I'm not. I'm not active enough in uh, enough discords, and I feel bad about that because I mean it's hard though because if you're just Time doing management, things, mate, it's, it, yeah. it's seriously like if I was to unmute every you know channel and every server, and it'll be the same for you. Yeah. You, you wouldn't move from Discord for no. 24 hours. You, no, you just man. wouldn't because there's so much. Um, it truly is. I, I've, I've had to start like turning people down like to join their servers or or anything because like if I'm not you know if I'm not integrated enough I'm not going to mm. join yeah and I don't want to just sit there and be an empty number for them no I so. agree I agree I mean it's like for me like the ones I'm most active in is my own uh like the American rat dog one it's like uh mm. from true like true's yeah, friends yeah. and like that that it's just interesting to get to know people um who aren't necessarily twitch people um yep. like it's definitely it's refreshing um although a lot of them have started streaming did that's actually something i think is amazing like i've seen so many people start streaming over my two years um yeah like and yeah do what i can to help them uh to get affiliate or at least have like a, a part of a community and it's so nice to see man like uh, just like off the top of my head i mean we've got like like harley crane you mm. uh fuck who else um auto um I don't know, I'm trying to think, like, right now, Quasi as well? Like, he's yeah, kind of started. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people that just have really started going for it. Um, Otto yep. has been doing a lot, actually. He dresses up in a suit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Otto's favourite title is Better Streamer Than Stefan Lee. Yeah, so, I know, I mean, right? <laughs> come on, Otto, bro. He's calling me out, dude. What's that about? I know, man. <laughs> Next year, he's calling it, like, Schedule or something. I shock him. I've got I've got um mm. ch- ch- Chatterino on and like yeah. the amount of times that I'm like they talk shit about me in that channel. <laughs> I just like what the fuck, dude? like and I call them out because it's like mainly my mods. <laughs> Unbelievable. That are just talking shit about me. What the fuck? I um, mean, your Chatterino must be like the ultimate weapon because I remember you exposed one of my like announcements one oh, time. Oh like, yeah. You managed to find it out before I'd even like yeah. told anyone that was insane. Well, I didn't. I didn't like. I didn't say anything until after. No, no, no. Because because, like, I but. thought, dude, like, this is new. I'm not going to say anything. But, like, yeah, that, that was mental. It was oh, just it was my merch, actually. Yeah, it was That's your merch. Was. Yeah. yeah, I can I couldn't remember what it was. But. Yeah, because, like, I, I remember seeing it, and I was like, oh, this is fucking badass. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I actually, wait. like, went to announce it, and you'd seen the whole range. Yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, That's I don't so know. Funny. It was it was a coincidence. Like, obviously, I didn't get added was, for that. Yeah, yeah. I just no. like uh, I think I've got like I'll click it now. I've got like thirteen channels or something. Yeah, you're beside Joe. Um, it was like mm. Joe versus Janverse, and I saw like if someone said something, it's like a little grey line at the top. So I just mm. clicked it. I just sometimes I want to see like who's followed who or whatever. Like if I click on Muse right now, 
um oh was he streaming earlier i think he must have been but it, it yeah, says he was, it says who he has just like hosted or whatever and like mm. i can see the end of his like people saying baldy raid i can see oh, all right. that it's cool That's and then cool. like uh when i saw yours i just clicked on it and then it was just on it Good yeah to be commanded me setting up yeah Probably wrong I, well <laughs> it looked like it was all right you know but you yeah. know when i clicked it I was like your merch looks amazing dude like you've done really well for that would you say Thank that you, uh rumble pandas helped you she did yeah i mean yeah because I'm not like your girlfriend artistically talented at all um, in terms of like <laughs> graphic design or uh, even imagination like I just don't have that capability but we worked on it together and mm. she got um, Procreate for the iPad that was uh, the app okay um, and it's really cheap it's like 10-15 pounds um, pretty widely used and she just got like a little Apple iPad pen thing right and yeah we just we just sketched them and drew them out I kind of came up with concepts like on paper from my head. Yeah. But and that that was the most difficult part. Like it wasn't creating the final designs. It was me getting what was in my head onto the paper. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. Um, because I had a whole bunch of ideas, but you know, and some of them really turned out terrible. And right. Some of them lo- looked great. So, um, there will be more in the future. But like, I wanted to release like a base, you For know, sure. batch to start with. I didn't want to give like people too much like there's obviously no pressure for anyone to buy anything um so i just wanted to give them like you know a couple to start with and then we'll, if it was well received then i would probably launch yeah. more so 100 that, percent that may well come this year yeah we'll next twitch payment i'll get a hoodie i'm telling you hey because <laughs> like i wanted to get one before but i've actually been trying because i'm fortunate to be where i am right here like this this house has been in the family for ages so like don't, mm. there's no rent or anything um, but I need to pay for like utilities and stuff, and yeah. like I'm just trying to actually save money though. Um, yeah, man, totally. Because do that. like you know, I I see thinking about it. Like I I've kind of coasted along for like three years or so. Well, not not three years. I put like two. Yeah, I suppose almost three years. Um, just like from uh being in Glasgow and streaming as well as doing voice acting, and then here and there having a job. So yeah. like during the summer months, I'd be a gardener. Um, and when I desperately needed it, I did uh, delivery driving work. Yeah. So like it was like can I just fill in places where I could, um, and everything else has just been surviving from Twitch and voice acting. Uh, it's it was crazy because like, you know, like looking back, I have just I've made money from talking shit and like you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I think that you look at it like that, but you know, like that's the life of a freelance artist, man. Whether yeah, suppose, you're doing graphic yeah. design or DJing, like yeah. we're all in the same boat. We're just plying our trades. Mm. Like money comes and goes. Like sometimes yep. it's a good month, sometimes it's not. Like yeah, for sure. You can't disrespect yourself for that, man. Like, no, just, I mean I feel like you know, I've 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 made good content in that time, but um, yeah. I don't know. Like when it when it's all you do, it, it's hard to know whenever things are going all right or not like it feels like it's just yeah. such a routine and like you don't know yeah. if it's actually benefiting anyone or um some some months you you don't make as much as well and that that can be like okay well how the fuck am i going to survive this month then like what's happening yeah. what's what's critical um it's hard because i think in our line of work um in terms of streaming and stuff you always look at money as your like key indicator but it never is yeah like, yeah you know just because you make less one month that could be because you know january people have just spent all their money on christmas yeah exactly covid people are at work Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like it doesn't mean that your content isn't supplying people with the entertainment they need yeah and that's you just have to like i'm very much working on that in myself Mm, and mm. you know once people are in a position to support you you know 100 percent they will so yeah for sure no no i i think um i remember talking about this with uh greg um a friend that i used to stay with and Mm. it was like uh, i I don't know i cannot i realized like he was saying like um, I've known this guy like making YouTube videos uh, for for a long time, and he never made any money. And then all of a sudden, after like four years or so, he started to make a lot of money. And I was like, mm-hmm. that's because he's built relationships with a bunch of people that likely were younger and now have jobs. So they're older, they have careers, and they have actual proper yeah. adult money. And then they want to give back to all of the time that you he gave to them. Like hundred percent, like it's a foundation. That, yeah, exactly. So I mean, I'm not like sitting here like I can't wait for four years, you know. <laughs> but, on, bossy, get your it, <laughs> <laughs> but no, like I think it, I have noticed that like some because before it was very evident who was my main financial supporters, and now right. it feels like it's more like widespread and i feel very fortunate to have that because you never want to rely on one person or even a couple people because like no 
I, I don't know. I mean, like, I always feel bad asking, like, or not, not, not ask. I never ask for money, but you, I have, mm. like, you know, everyone knows what subs are. Everyone knows what donations are. Yeah, donation it's, goals. Yeah. yeah, it's always a thing. Um, and like, and yeah, people understand that you need financials to actually survive and keep making content and stuff. Um, of course. And like, but I don't know. Like, I don't. I just always feel like I'm not at a level that I can justifiably say that. Uh, this is how much I need or whatever. Like I always mm. make it less than what I actually do need, just so that I don't feel as bad. I don't. It's a weird thing where I just don't want to feel entitled. Um, yeah, I mean, and you know, that's just saying? something that you know. That's just your nature, I guess. That's who you are, and it shows that you don't want to burden people with your your financial like, yeah exactly ongoings because you know they've got their own. But like yeah. That's that's just because you're not a horrible person. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. You know, it's quite that's good to know. So like, yeah, no, nah, it's just only only someone, in my opinion, that mm. you know had no sense of morality would would ever not feel bad about right, right. You know, actively just taking people's money. Yeah, I mean, even when so, I do like like long streams and like, a subathon, I'll rip the piss out of it. You know, yeah, I'll be yeah. like, right, guys, you're paying for my beer tonight. You know, like you know, <laughs> I like you'll just make it something silly because <laughs> yeah. Like if you don't like, I I would feel bad. Like literally, I don't know. Just yes. trying to make it too Staring serious. Staring into a camera and being like, "Please give." Yeah, money. please give yeah. money. Like, like, yeah, it feels like one of those adverts that you give like five mm. quid a month to. You know. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> so I don't know. Like I'm very fortunate to receive anything, um, mm. and I always see it that way. Especially whenever I see like super old clips or whatever, and like it's like four subs or whatever. Laughing. You know, yeah. and it's like yeah. you come uh, away. You come away. Yeah, like you don't. It, it's I don't, as you grow and as you do it more, you, your bar starts to change as to where you think, you know, the minimum is. But then you yeah. realize like how fortunate you are to have uh, like hundred percent like anything at all. Like people yeah. do not have to give you any financials. It's all free. The service. Um. So, you know, there's no there's no tickets. You do, there's nothing you need to pay for. Um, yeah. Sp- speaking of that though, like, see, um, have you, have you seen that new thing? It's like gigs that you can pay for for artists right now. Have you seen that? It's like a live stream kind of thing um, where you pay like, I don't know, like an entry fee of five or eight quid or whatever, and then you can watch a live show that they'll do. Mm. Have you seen that? Um, I've, I've seen that in terms of like, um, I don't know, more like performing arts, like right. theatre and stuff, but I didn't, right. I've not seen any like, and comedians, I've seen a bunch of comedians mm. doing that. That's interesting. Um, but I've not seen any like musicians doing that yeah. as such. Uh, Jade Bird. Um, did it recently. Hmm. I don't know if you know who that is. Um, did she get a good like attendance or? Uh, you know? I don't know, but I mean, it, it seemed like she was posting a lot about it, and she was like yeah. thanking people for coming. So I assume so. Oh, well. I, I didn't fucking go. Uh, I'd already, I already, uh, I went to her show though at S G W three. Um, yeah. Which was is that how you say S G W three? It's S W G three. S W G three. Swedge. Swedge. People call All it Swedge. Right. Swedge. Yeah. Yeah, that pretty much explains itself, I think. Now I went to her show there with my big brother, <laughs> uh, and it was great mm. crack. It was also really fun. Um, she just, I don't know, like uh, Richard found her on Spotify, mm-hmm. and then um, we saw that she was coming up there at one point, and we just like, fuck it, let's get some tickets. And it was super cheap as well. It was only, like, That's the best quid. way to do it, man. See those like cheap gigs that mm-hmm. you know you don't necessarily have a huge expectation for because you're just like you make, and that's what I miss now. Like that's <laughs> what I really miss. Like just. Just saying, fuck it. And yeah, going. yeah, 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 for sure. Like, I would give, I'd go and see anyone. Mm, mm. <laughs> I know. Like, I'd go and see anyone, bro, just for that experience. And that's what it is. Like, especially if you, like, say you don't have, like, if it's your favorite artist, you're, you're, you're already there. Like, you're ready for it. But, like, if it's someone mm. just kind of new or on the rise, then you're probably going to enjoy it more because you're like, holy shit, that was actually really good. Like, exactly. watch out for this person. Yeah, like, I love that, like, the I know, serendipity of if it was going to be amazing or not. You know, like, I just, like, I like just jumping in there to see what happens. Like, yeah. uh, my big brother, like, his mates, um, they knew these different, like, pubs that and clubs or whatever are that I didn't know necessarily. And whenever mm. I'd started to stay with Richie, I started to go out with him with his mates, so I started to become pal with them. And before I knew it, we were going to bands that I'd never heard of, but they all knew, um, mm. like Head in Valley and Rest as well. I don't know if you heard of those. They're like mm. proper kind of like mm. Scottish sure. bands. Um, they're like Scottish bands, but they're I don't know. Um, they're kind of like folk, I suppose, but like some of it is like kind of it's a weird mix of like electronic music as well. I right. don't know. It's interesting. Um, but yeah, it was just cool because like I would never have by myself done that, 
like gone there to yeah, see these yeah. artists and then all of a sudden i'm actually really enjoying their music and having a great night you know that's it you've got so, to be open-minded and yeah i think a lot of people have actually you know said that to me in stream as well like they've said i don't normally listen to this type of music but you've you know really opened it up to me brilliant like, yeah you know people that don't listen to house music or like non-vocal music mm -hmm. so much yeah um you know i think it's a guy called n3 olp he goes into music stream a lot i'm not sure if he's a follower i think he might follow your channel but okay. um he he literally came into my stream and was like i never listened to this type of music um like before coming to your stream but like i just can't stop coming back and let's go like he'll just play warzone with my my stream on in the background i'm like bro that's like exactly what i want <laughs> yeah, like, yeah you don't need to be super active a fan you know yeah, yeah. Or, or active like if you're there and just vibing out yeah that is yeah like exactly what i'm after so yeah no i love that man that, that's that's, that's kind of like that's kind of how i see listening to this podcast as well is like um whenever i've done premieres and people have like said like sorry i couldn't be at the premiere or whatever I'm like don't ever mm. like it's a podcast dude like yeah. whenever i listen to podcasts it's like i have it on in the background it's you're listening yeah. to it but you're not you're doing something else as well like it's like it's it, it can it's an add-on yeah exactly i mean yeah. I, I remember i had this conversation with someone once um about uh how audio or radio like they thought it was going to be dying out um right. and i was like no it's the opposite i think mm. audio is going to gain traction and it has because of the fact that um people are doing shit so people are doing yeah. things whilst listening to audio they've always got earphones in or always playing something um like so it's either a podcast or music or whatever um and it is it's very evident that it's only grown you know like definitely video did not kill the radio star you know nope. <laughs> it did not happen nope. um which is amazing because like even though there's a visual element um i mean right now this entire podcast has just been the stephanie podcast logo thing um mm. but like from other ones i have like searched up shit and stuff like that like you're kind of you're seeing part of it but most likely than not you're listening on spotify or you're listening with it in the background um yeah for your streams as well, uh, yes, you do have the visual aspect, and like obviously, I was picking that up. How much you've changed it, and it looks fucking mm. super aesthetic now. It's really it's well not done. essential, though. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to be watching you in order to enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. And it's, like, it's I, there if you want to. If you want yeah. to laugh at somebody dancing like a fanny, then yeah, <laughs> no, I love that. But um, yeah, it works both ways. So yeah, yeah, and like I think as well. Like I, sometimes I feel bad that I'm not spamming, you know, baby Jedi's in your chat, yeah, I mean, but like. At the same time, I am there, you know, yeah. and like I am listening, and it's you know I'm still enjoying the content. Um, yeah. But like I think if you are actually you have some perspective as a streamer, you understand that um there is people that are there. That it's just yeah, like they 100%. don't have to continually be talking to you for you to actually be providing a content for them. You per know? Perfect example of that is like. I know some of my viewers will like listen to me in the shower and stuff. Like, yeah, they're, sure. They're having a wee rave, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I did that this morning. Watching me, you know. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, like so... they're not, they're not there, like you know, spamming emotes or anything or watching me at all. They're yeah. going about their lives, but banging out some tunes and yeah. like another of my viewers, Kimmy, she like went to the shop the other day and like did her grocery shopping but just had me in like her earphones oh was, that's like, brilliant dan dancing around the supermarket i was like i that's love that so like, cool yeah imagine someone like stopped her and was like what are you listening to and <laughs> yeah. she just whapped out like my twitch stream like that'd be so yeah, sick yeah exactly man yeah i think you never know where your content is reaching yeah. i think it's one of the coolest things man like um even like not knowing like like you posted last night that uh you were listening to the podcast as you fell asleep i, or was, yeah. I love that that's that, like i do that like with podcasts so that meant so much yeah. to me to know that people um are listening in that way um even just like uh vethika was in her car listening to it and it came up in her like um radio thing like the title mm. said definitely podcast and oh, that's crazy that's great like because yeah, it, it's just it really, you know, makes it, it brings it back home. It resounds mm. with you that you can see that it's not just someone staring at a YouTube video. Yeah, like, it's a visualization. Like, yeah, aspect for sure. Yeah, and like I, even if I if I do the premiere or whatever, like uh, it, there's a part of you that's like, oh, there's only two people here right now, but really. Mm. It's just a primer. It doesn't matter or anything. And then, like, by the yeah. end of that week or whatever, it's got so many views. Like, there's a yeah. lot of people that are there in their own time uh, to listen. Um, so 
Like, cause that's how I consume content. Like, I can't ever feel entitled if I don't do the same thing. Like, when I, the way I ingest content myself is usually I'm cooking or you know I'm in the shower or I, I don't know whatever I'm doing. Like, even yeah. even just uh, things like dotting around, getting your day done. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I think it's it's very easy to think like as a as a new streamer or if you're having maybe if you're feeling a bit down and you're wanting interaction and it's not happening you can feel like oh well i'm just bad i'm the, something's mm. not i'm something's wrong with me but it's not necessarily uh maybe you might be doing something different and it will take a little bit of like time for people to get used to it that does 100%. happen um, if you change game or whatever um or you change genre like if you completely switched it up like say um like uh it, it's a bit of a gamble sometimes like when you did the fifa songs yeah. Like that's a big switch from what you were regularly mm. doing, but Very I love big, that. Yeah. I love the, yeah. the the ambition and the tenacity to just jump in and go for it. That you're fucking audacity, bro, to be like, "Fuck it, <laughs> FIFA night, man!" I love that. Like it's that, just, it's so cool. You it's know, it's just that variety. Like it's a big, a big genre. Like it seems niche, but you think of how many people buy and play FIFA every yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, sure. And then you know, music, no matter what type it is, well, people will form personal attachments to like certain songs certain genres certain artists so on yeah um and you know a so one song can mean so much to one person so yeah i think like in terms of fifa games you know and i'm like this as well you know like you hear a song and you instantly think oh that's fifa like yeah, yeah yeah or, yeah like, it's, it's crazy right and, like you completely discredit the song and everything it stands because you associate it with a football yeah game, but, like, i'm on top of the world hey <laughs> <laughs> you know like there's so many songs. Big up. yeah yeah <laughs> but like you know in that moment it's okay to do that because yeah. you know that's you know you've probably spent like 100 hours on that particular fifa so you'll probably have heard that song so many more times and yeah it does support the artists so i think like that it's an amazing way for a lot of artists to get like a uh, start right definitely yeah. like it's like, even like need for speed did a lot of that as well mm. like um it's really interesting like even like uh riders on the storm remember that song riders on I the do. storm like and there was like the snoop Dogg remix and that was a need for speed underground city <laughs> And like that Amazing. was my introduction to Snoop Dogg in the doors. Really? You know, it's crazy. And then he's just like, Oh holy shit, there we go. So I don't know, I'm what, trying to think of other moments, but yeah, exactly, right? It's like the whole hip hop thing and obviously yeah. my big brother was into hip hop. Like he was um I don't know, he loved like Eminem and then of course if you like Eminem you know who Dr. Dre is. And then yeah. you then you start to learn NWA. who yeah exactly nwa so then you're like easy -E, and yeah. then yeah tupac biggie and then it like it just it keeps going and going and then it's exhibit in the game and you know it's yep. everyone so i love how it's it comes together. it's really weird that, like how scotland knows so much about hip-hop you know it's that yeah 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 it's i don't i don't know where the connection is i don't know honest. either <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's kind of weird like it's not even bams though it's just like people just knew i, I don't know what it is I don't know. Do you know, I think it's almost because it's so out with our culture. Right, right. Like it just attracts I mean, us because it's. So I know different. you get Scottish rappers and stuff, but like that's very different. They're, they're not going to yeah. rap in the same style, so I think it's just like almost an admiration. Like, yeah, for know, sure. Um, just like Eminem going to Teen the Park and that dude, and just getting yeah. such an unreal yeah. reception. Mm. Like my big brother was there, uh, and I, I've always like been so hyped that he went there. He said, like, "Yeah, I found his tickets when um, we were cleaning out the house. Like mm. I found the ticket that had it, and it was like a fifty cent one as well." Um, Mad. It was crazy, you know. Like th that was like D twelve days, you know. <laughs> Jesus. Which <laughs> is just, yeah. just unreal. Very different time. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's guess. crazy because these guys are like you know international stars, but at the end of the day, they're just human beings yeah. like the rest of us. Because just, just creatives, man. Like the first, the first gig I ever went to was um, James Morrison. Oh, hey. Do you remember him? Yeah. So I went to see him perform, right? And he was supported by One Republic, okay. which was insane because mm. they they ended up blowing up, obviously. But yeah, like back then they were not as big as they mm, ended up mm. being. Um, and they actually probably put on one of the best live performances I've seen. There you go. In terms of, like, obviously non DJs and stuff, because most of my gigs have been DJs. But yeah. Um, <laughs> But James Morrison came on as the headliner, and about his fifth or sixth song, he literally forgot the lyrics to his own song, <laughs> oh, and God. so he just he just started having like banter with the crowd, and, and that's like you know it's moments like that that you just realise like they're up on that stage and we're down here, but like yeah, they, they're just like everyone else. Like, yeah, they have sure. Human moments, and and that's just the way it is, and that's why I'm not too stressed if I like mess up on stream or anything because I yeah. can just 
like you say, I can just have chat with people and like exactly. It's fine. I hold my hands up and be like, yeah, that was shit. I'll do it again. <laughs> yeah, I think it's important to hold yourself to a standard. But whenever that does mm. lapse, I think your reaction really does determine like just yeah. your mindset, like how you're feeling. Um, yeah. Because like even if if a comedian f- like forgets a joke, right or whatever, like they can then rip the piss out themselves to then still mm. make you laugh. So it's like yeah. they're still creating a bond. Yeah, it's a recovery. I think recovering mm. is just as important as performing. I think that's yeah. super crucial. Um, but yeah, for Plus sure. It's not about how hard you fall; it's about how quick you get back up. Exactly. <laughs> get, get knocked down seven times, get up eight. Yeah. So uh, no, it's all, all that shit. Like uh, even just like. Um, like talking about like uh bands supporting people that absolutely blew up like oasis at king mm. tuts and all that stuff yeah like mad. you never know who that next i mean it's hard right now obviously because none of that's happening um but i think it gives us some pause to like look and see um how important and crucial these venues and experiences are to our they are mate just yeah, culture you know like we can't we can't lose them like no and it's hard because like there's a, even king tuts itself was like struggling i don't they yeah. probably still are you know, like there's a lot of places, even like um, uh, pubs that would have bands in, like mm. uh, like Maggie Mays yeah. and uh, yep. Malone's and Kitties and stuff like that. There's yeah. a lot of like Irish places uh, where you'd have like folk bands in, and it would always or just a single dude with a guitar, and he'd be like, ding, 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 and it'd just have a good crack, you know? Like you'd yeah, end exactly. up it just, enjoying just yourself. Just adds the atmosphere and stuff. Yeah, y- can... you'd expect it. Like it's seven o'clock, yeah. this guy's on until eight, you know, and it's just good fun. I, yeah. I just People I don't really miss it. Sing along, you know? Yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> even if like, even if it's just, I don't know, like at the the park bar, you've been there. Mm. Like, uh, uh, it's like the sure west. It's, it's a west coast bar on the west right. side of Glasgow. Like, you literally meet people mm. from Auburn and like Gulped and shit there. Uh, it's metal. I remember I went and rocked in and I met uh, a guy that I went to high school with and I hadn't seen him in probably about five or six years and immediately well not maybe that long it was about four years uh, and immediately we knew each other and fucking cuddling and had a fight no, it was great crack dude and, love that you know it's just it's one of those places where it's just you feel like a real family culture there it's like everyone's together it's like a that traditional sense of just community um, yeah. it, which is really hard to come by right now um, like you've got to utilize social media and just the internet and like things that you do um, I know what you and I do is similar but different like you have people together to experience like one thing together so that's music obviously and then yeah. like me it's more I'm talking back and forth so it's a lot of just like I'm like yeah, something to bounce thoughts off of and then everyone else is mm. kind of part of the community that can then talk to each other and stuff it's like a you know as if we're all in like a big hall it's just like yeah, having, it's a having a yeah having a pint together so it's nice oh, like we, we're gonna smash pints when we're alive oh to, my man. god man i miss you like uh, i know i miss you too man I, i've i've barely barely met you which is weird i know I think, I think it was just once i think it is right i've met you a few times that day, but yeah yeah I, I came i came to edinburgh again but i didn't meet you that day because I, mm. I fucked up i went earlier <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah I was, I was going to the lemmy thing and then i realized that i was two days early <laughs> that's so funny i don't know how i did that dude fucking idiot my um, mate did that once but on a much worse scale where he was uh flying back from denmark to london and he f- he had his flights wrong by a day so he turned up at the airport a day late oh god <laughs> <laughs> fucking idiot looking at the board like expecting his flight yeah oh <laughs> jesus i was like mate a day early at least yeah on, a day early would be way better yeah <laughs> jesus man oh my days uh, but yeah I, I was I was actually looking at some memories. Uh, it came up on um, Instagram today, like uh, mm-hmm. it was like four years ago, and it was when I was in Rotterdam, uh, like the train station, um, yep. and I actually thought it was Schiphol, like the Amsterdam airport, uh, right. and like uh, I posted it, and someone just said to me, like, "Oh, look, that's my country," and I was like, "Yeah, it's a lovely airport," and then they replied to me saying, "Oh no, uh, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the Rotterdam train." So I was like, "Oh shit, oh, no, no, yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, it's funny." Man. But like I, I don't know. Like I, I haven't traveled that much in planes by myself. Um, mm. Probably only like four times. So I don't know. Like when when I went to Spain, when uh, I flew back home from Switzerland, when I went to America, and when I went with Richie to Ireland. So yeah, you know it's like. But with family and stuff, we used to go to Tenerife like uh, every year or so. My mum had like a timeshare thingy, so you'd right, like yeah. you'd go out to like uh, the Canary Islands or whatever. Um, we're in that area. It was, it was see, like looking That's on the dope, map. Now, it was lovely. Like it was really, 
I, I, the thing is, though, is like, I, I kind of count it as traveling, but not really, because I was so young, mm. and you don't really dictate what happens. It's yeah. your mom and dad are doing yeah. it all. So yeah, I feel that. You know, and you're, you're of course at like a villa resort place. You're going to, you know, the big swimming parks. Mm. You know, like you're very touristic. Whereas, like, if you're by yourself, you're probably going to wee pubs. You're probably yeah. like on trains going to like uh, wee towns you wouldn't have gone to otherwise. Good you know? shit. Exactly. <laughs> For I sure. Mean, when we when we were young, like me and Joe and our family, we always used to go mostly on local holidays, like right. within Scotland. Cool. Um, so I've only ever been abroad with my mum once, All and right. it was when I was like thirteen or fourteen. And coincidentally, it was partly to the Canary Islands as well. Just oh, like cool. You. Right on. Um, and the funniest part was it was because I was playing for a rugby team. <laughs> what? And for some reason we chose Spain as our destination where it's barely a sport. Or certainly it was much less of one back then. Oh. And not only that, but it was over my birthday. like So it was the Easter break. And it was raining the entire time. <laughs> and in the Canary so we, Islands. We were in the Canary Islands. But oh obviously it's not, it's not just rain there. It's like fucked. Yeah. So like we were trying to play rugby in the freezing cold rate like genuinely colder than scotland like my hands turned blue at one point oh my days I, I think i ended up coming off during the game because i was i genuinely couldn't catch the ball like it was too cold that is unreal and i was i was just sitting there like the whole thing like being like this is actually my birthday in spain like, <laughs> my first experience of going abroad like what is happening oh that's heartbreaking dude but I've, been, I've been very fortunate since then like all the traveling that i've done has been pretty much independent and has generally gone quite well yeah so, uh, well, um, where all have you been uh like uh, just europe well, and stuff yeah um europe and then america twice all right. um, but both times new york to see calverse oh Big yeah up. yeah so that's your cousin right no, it's uh, my friend from school. So Callum. All oh, right, okay. Um, I just assume with yeah, the verse it was. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he just he just jumped from the back. <laughs> just like one of the homies. Early. Got it. Um, yeah, we went to school together, and then he ended up um, going to uni in Australia for a year. Mm. And when he came back, because um, he'd actually met a girl while he was in Australia, so um, he came back to Scotland after that. But she went back to New York because that's where she was from. Ah, uh, okay. And so they kept the relationship going long distance, and eventually he decided to move out there. Ah. Um, so he moved to New York in like, oh, probably get this wrong, but 2014, 15, I think it was. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go for 15. But yeah, so he moved out there, and then I made my first trip to visit him in 2017. Mm. And it was over um, Independence Day. It was over July the 4th. Oh, my days. So we had a whale of a time. That would have been uh, full um, on. Yeah, we got to go to um, Long Island for the weekend. Chad Hogan. Hey. Um, <laughs> we actually did. Uh, it was incredible. We got to stay um, at, like, they had a friend of the family over there who um, worked for Microsoft. The dad worked uh, for Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> and um, literally, he had, like, the most American Long Island house I've ever seen. It really? Was massive. He had, like, a proper dad pad with a darts board, like, oh, a pool brilliant. table um like his own gym and stuff and then out in the back garden we were just chilling having like a barbecue because yeah. it was actually nice for once mm. and um he was just like all right who wants to shoot my crossbow and i was like <laughs> <laughs> i was like what wow and he, he had like a proper hunting crossbow and we all just got to like shoot at a target that's fucking brilliant and i thought i was in like black ops or something <laughs> of course yeah it was hilarious um so yeah that was the first time and we went to like a couple of gigs um right on whilst we were over there which is insane um and then i went again in 2019 which i'm really glad i did now because yeah I'm, sure I'm staying well clear of america for the next while oh no, no um but yeah um it was just awesome like we did a lot more like i did a bit more independently that time because callan had like picked up a job just before i went okay um so he had, he like couldn't take the time off um, yeah I so I, I i went and did um central park like by myself just took a whole day ah. and it was like an absolute maze i had no idea how i made it back to <laughs> um but yeah like that for me was like a really big step just going and using like the american subway like by yeah, myself yeah sure man. um you know just doing all that and yeah, it's, I mean, it's surreal you know, when you're in those kind of spots like uh like yeah. for me it was like london subway too like you're just gonna mm. you've heard of it you you've seen pictures yeah. you've seen videos 
But when you're in it, you're like, whoa, I'm actually here. Like, it's yeah. just weird, dude. Like, me, I went to Buckingham Palace and that. Like, we went, like, for Touch London and stuff. You just go to these sites. And, like, yeah. Hyde High Park as well. And it's weird just being there. You're like, this is that actually is. real, you know. And, yeah. like, the Berlin Wall. Like, uh, I went there. I spent the whole day with Harley there um, on the Sunday. We went and saw, like, the East Gallery, like, all the, the paintings and stuff. And then the classic one with the American president kissing the guy. Um, yeah. And then... I forget exactly who it was, like fucking Clint or some shit. I don't know. Uh, I don't think it was. Uh, but anyway, it's like there's so much interesting like culture there that you see in yeah. pictures. But then when you're there, it's like, well, this is real. It's different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. like the the big uh, Brandenburg Gate as well. Mm. Like, or like it's just unreal being there. Also, in Berlin, you can drink beer on the streets. Yeah, it's the same in like Rome as well. I love me and that. Did that when we went to Rome. It was brilliant. Bro, I want five of fish when drinking my beer. I was like, <laughs> just like Come yeah, on, man. yeah, <laughs> fucking much. <like, laughs> yeah, <Come> on, <laughs> you got no fans. I know it was so good, dude. Like, I, I don't know. It's just because, like, as a Scottish guy, like, you're like, oh shit, it's the Rosers. You know, fucking no, no, Polish are gonna take my drink off me. You know, yeah, exactly. So that's how fucking grim our society is that we can't be trusted with alcohol <laughs> anywhere that's not our own homes or a licensed venue <laughs> yeah i know no. fuck the, the, the thing was right is um uh seen Tra- i went to travis uh and just before christmas with my brother in 2018 and we mm. had boiling hot mulled wine in the concert which is crazy because like unreal. yeah like that's for scottish people to have boiling water and yeah. alcohol together in uh, one yeah, yeah. but Do cause, some damage with that I mean if it was a I don't know any other act like uh, I, I think it would be very different but Travis is so relaxed and everyone was so spaced out and just enjoying themselves um, meanwhile you can't even take a plastic water bottle into Murrayfield <laughs> exactly dude <laughs> oh man Jesus yeah I don't know it's just it's different like how you know the rules kind of sway depending on what's happening and where yep. you are 100% but yeah, I I went to California in America, so wow. uh, that was other coast. Yeah, that that was um it would have been twenty eighteen, yeah, November, no October. Um, so like that was obviously still during the Trump administration as well. But because yep. I think both of us kind of avoided it because we were in very blue places, like yep. New York and California. Yep. I mean, that's you know they're like About the most as democratic as it gets. Yeah, yeah. So even though Trump's from New York, right? But as the fucking is. Yeah, I mean, he's got his tower there, which pisses yeah. them off enough. So. Yeah, dude. I don't know. That's a, it, I, like, I just thought it was remarkable how America's just like completely stripped itself of any dignity in four years. Like, how that's... Yeah. It, it's amazing how quickly it happened. Because, you know, like, yeah, I've always grown up thinking America was like this grand, brilliant, to be. you know, proud yeah. nation. Um, but it just feels like it's just, you know, completely xenophobic and somewhere you really don't want to be. You know, you don't want yeah. to be associated with it. Um, I, I honestly thought Callum would come home right at one, right. At one point um, yeah he, he's stuck it out fair play to him I mean, yeah for sure <laughs> you know it's one of those things like with getting your citizenship and stuff like you've you've put in the, the work like you yeah. don't want to just yeah. throw it away so I totally respect it but like if it was me I I, I mean probably would have had second thoughts because mm, like I can just, understand the culture is just quite concerning. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to say too much on it. <laughs> I have a lot of American friends, but I'm just, yeah. No, it is concerning. I get it. I get it. I mean, like, just even looking at, like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Like, because I, I know a lot of good Americans, and, like, mm. you see how they're so disappointed in their own country. Like, I don't think yeah. I've ever felt super disappointed in Scotland. I think we're no. quite fortunate to be... Like, obviously, there's moments where you're like, what the fuck is going on here? Um, Even, like... More the, more the UK, yeah, in general. Yeah, but, like, us yeah. fucking up independence. Like, yeah. you know, like, things like that. Or, like, leaving the EU because of another country. Like, that's... Yeah, but that's that, tough. If you look back, it's kind of our own fault for not going independent in the first place. So it's, mm. you know... But, obviously, that kind of spurs on the next independence rally. So... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think people look at it like that, but at the end of the day, there was no hint of us leaving Europe when yeah, the independence yeah. was held. So exactly. Like, yeah. really. I know, I know. But I mean, it's kind of like hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah, of course. So, yeah. But yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it's going to be interesting. I, I remember saying this, uh, I think it was like just when Trump came in. Uh, I was listening to a lot of the NPR podcasts, like political podcasts. Um, right. so I just found it really interesting. And then I was like, dude, the next five years are going to be so interesting politically. And they fucking yeah. have been. They like, have been, like, it's yeah. been just crazy. The the uh, I don't know highs and lows, and just you don't under you don't know what's real anymore. 
like when it comes down to politics news, you know, no. that all these it's like just, satire the media really don't help. Yeah, exactly. Like the the satire websites, you can't tell if they're being real or not. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's yep. it's. I don't think that's very good. Like you, you also get like the deep fake stuff, right? Or you can like fake that they've said something, um, or like uh, have an audio clip of them saying That's something. That's madness. And there's yeah. like it's like doctored or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and like a lot of it, like I mean, it's not perfect. You can tell a little bit, but it's mm. getting better and better and better. And like before you know it, you won't be able to trust any news source or any of the speech or anything. And it's ha- a bit scary because like that kind of thing is leaking into the the streaming community now, and just like celebrity life in general because like you do get people out there who are going to try and bring people down yeah from sure where they are and that's what worries me mm. um is people you know creating something that's a fiction and you not being able to disprove it yeah i think that's that's quite quite What's a real thing? possibility because i am seeing it like examples of that like recently there was a streamer who i can't remember the name of but i saw on her twitter um that she'd had to like launch a whole campaign because someone had during her stream come in and said that they were holding her dad hostage oh fuck yeah i did see that yeah i yeah. was like nah like <laughs> and, like her fuck? phone like, rang with her dad's number or something right yeah uh, it was mad like yeah and they obviously they held her to ransom for something and i was like fucking crazy like, man like if that stuff ever happens to like anyone that i know mm. i'll just like lose it man yeah because I know. that's just not on like for sure and, like banning that person from a stream isn't enough like no. you need to like pursue criminal charges but like yeah you're, yeah you're not in a position like even moderators can't do that like, yeah 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 no it's so it needs to be reprimanded it needs to be like tougher regulation mm. but how on earth do you regulate exactly. that? exactly like that's yeah. yeah that's that's some scary situations i mean like i think a lot of big streamers never expect Expected the baggage that comes with being famous and yeah, having true. all that, and I, they're yeah. just not mentally prepared, nor like just prepared in general um, yeah. for like uh, outcomes like that. Um, I mean, being doxxed is one thing, but having yeah. that happen to you, like that, is so major. Like yeah, that's next level. I mean, that's I, I don't know. Like, what, what what do you even charge that with? What's that called? Like, just harassment? <laughs> I mean, it's like. I don't yeah. know. It's like uh, is it attempted murder. I mean, I don't, I what think, is it? Because it's the not irony of it is know? that. The only reason there's no like enforcements in place is because it's almost so out with the realm of what you think a human being is possible of right, doing. Right, right, right. <laughs> like you don't even like plan for it or compensate for it because you just think who in their right mind would do that? Like you're not, yeah. you're not in a right mind if you're doing something like that. Yeah, man. Oh, so how know. can you? Yeah, it's it's it full takes on. the worst type of person to create. I mean, that's like, so far beyond a troll. It's yeah. like that's a. I don't know. That's a psycho. That's like yeah. full on. Oh, I don't Very know. Very dark. A, a psychological thriller movie shit, man. That, that's crazy. Yeah. You know. And imagine you're just fucking playing Fortnite, <laughs> and that's what yeah, happens. Like, you know. Yeah. I mean, fuck. Like. A fucking. Yeah. Like innocent little game. Yeah, like, and you killed them in arena, bro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, did you see the shit I did with news? I did see that. I was pissing <laughs> myself, mate. Yeah, that was funny. That I mean, was his, that was his TikTok comments, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, like people saying that, like, yo, what was it? You shouldn't be in an org, bro, or whatever, just yeah. because, like, oh, I found you in an arena and I killed you. It's like, is your IGL you. devour muse? Because if so, you're the one I've been killing all yeah, the time. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. All right, here you go, bro. Here's eight to eight thumbs up. Well done. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. Your, completed the internet tick of the, bo- yeah, tick of the day yeah, yeah. or whatever you want for that. Yeah, man, it's just like just pure, pure jealous people that are just reaching for mm. some form of like respite, just because they don't. I mean, Muse has achieved so much, like in his time, yeah. and it, it's it's inspiring to see. But if you're if you don't believe in yourself or you don't have that kind of courage, like you're, I don't know, just commitment to actually do something that matters, then you can be like, oh, I'm going to bring them down so that I feel better, you know? Yeah, and it's like it's such a. Oh, I don't know. Really, super thoughts. Like it, it hurts to see that someone's going through so much shit for them to actually feel that way. Yeah, you know, know, like they really don't believe in themselves. Like they're just like in a pit of darkness, and like mm. uh, it's hard. Like because you kind of have sympathy and empathy for that person. Like, I mean, I do. Like because I'm like, why would you be such a cunt? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like why yeah. be so toxic? But that like something's happened. Like they haven't been. They don't have good friends, or they hang around with the wrong people. Um. Or like uh, I don't know, they had a, a shit childhood or something. There's something that's gone on there, but it comes yeah. to a point where you just have to. I mean, usually, most often than not, you just block and move on. You know, yeah, uh, it, it is what it is. Easiest uh, solution. <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
Um, but I mean, every once in a while, like I've had trolls that come into the channel, and you can make banter with them, and then they change their tune. Like um, I've noticed that, like especially when the young teams come in. I don't know if you ever had yeah. a young team in. Uh, it's just like if you put Scottish every once in a while, you'll get like they three or four of the same account at once. Yeah. yeah. And like I don't know if they're in like a Discord that are just you know jumping around. Those, like, those are the worst. Yeah, like, the schemers. Like yeah, exactly. I had, man. That, I had that a few times in my early days when I hadn't like sort of banned for it because you know how you can like b- ban words like blacklist words. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I hadn't done any of that, so they were just like spamming like oh. stupid stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah, just... yeah. So I've resolved that issue by just banning most of the stuff that you don't want in there. But yeah, yeah, I get you. Honestly, like you know, if you've got a good community like you and I do. Um, yeah. Most of the time, there will be enough people there to combat it. Like, yeah. If, it do- if they do get through, so. I I think it's so important to have a self-regulating community. Like. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Because you're not going to see everything as well. Because no. like the like, because you're busy focusing on your mix. I uh, might be just focusing on you know a game. There's a certain boss fight mm. or something or whatever is going on, and I'm not, not seeing the chat. Truck. Yeah, <laughs> I never crash it. No, you thought of it. Yeah, I'm a brilliant true. driver, dude. Seven hundred <laughs> hours, no crashes. Look at me, right? <laughs> Unreal. Must be a world record. It is by far. Uh, all proven as well. Uh, <laughs> dude, remember when Quasi completely sent me to the stratosphere? I like, do. oh my god, that that was it. Like he he drove from Edinburgh, like all the way to Italy, <laughs> like just full speed, and then Unreal. battered me. I don't know how he did it because he must have like the triangulation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To like required for him to find the highway I was on, driving exactly. the wrong side of the road, so that he could then <laughs> smash into me on like a four lane highway. Um, uh, just to say that's commitment. Yeah. Like, fair play. Yeah, and and he put on his mic because it had the the vicinity microphone. He just here. <laughs> like, he's just like he puts on his mic, just screaming at me. Oh, oh dude, that that was is such he, a moment. Is he ever not screaming? Like I know, I know. Quasi, like he apparently he stays uh, like where his room is. It's on the opposite side of the house, so he can yeah, just be loud as fuck. Because I like he always stays with mom and dad. I could never be that loud um, without so being told off. You know. They've devised that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, just fuck, shove him in the in corner. Place there. No yeah. <laughs> that's it. See, that's a, that's the thing of it being in here. Like, uh, this is like an old coal <laughs> shed, so it's super insulated with brick. Um, like it's just like it's. I mean, there's a door behind me and stuff too, but mm. and then it's in the back lobby. Then there's a kitchen, and then there's a brick wall into uh, the living room of my neighbor. So there's so much that this sound has to go through. Um, yeah. So I can be a bit louder because even just like not ne- I'm not necessarily screaming all the time and screeching and whatever, but like I remember like when I was staying with Richie or with mom and dad and stuff, just little things like um, I don't know, like singing, I, just yeah. singing, yeah, just playing around. You know, I couldn't do that like past a certain hour, like even nine o'clock or whatever. You know, on a Sunday, you'd have to you know be quiet. And I remember it's the like. Best. Best thing about moving out of home for me oh, was just I, the amount of the amount of noise I made. Yeah, dude. I mean, I don't know. I like. I'm glad I stuck through it because like, there's a lot of it where you kind of feel like, oh well, I can't, I can't do this anymore. You know, but you just have to mm. kind of, uh, I don't know. Like, you need to like kind of adjust yourself, adjust your content, adjust your volume, adjust the gain in the microphone. You know, little things that you can just like benefit yourself so that you're not annoying. You're, you're the least amount of resistance as possible. Yeah, know? of course. So. Yeah. Like, because Richie and I fell out. Um, it was when we came back. It was in the beginning of this year. Like, when we came back from Ireland. It's kind of mental, though, because I went... Oh, 2020, sorry. Um, like, I, oh, for my birthday, went on holiday to Ireland during just before COVID, like, just before lockdown, which is kind of crazy, because we obviously didn't realise we went to clubs, pubs, everything. Um, <laughs> we could have easily had it, you know, like, or got received uh, COVID. But, like... That's actually crazy, you know, isn't it? Like... It didn't. It didn't happen, just because of the fact that, I don't know, it hadn't reached properly in Ireland yet. Um, mm. but we're in Dublin and Galway and all the pubs, you know, like all the all the clubs and that and stuff. So just smashing it, making the most of it before it ends. Yeah, I, yeah. If only we knew. But if I mean, only. yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, then like when we came back home, uh, Rich and I just kind of fell out because I was just being being loud. I don't know. Like um, we did we only been staying together for fourteen months at that point, so yeah. it was kind of like you know we'd had enough of each other, you know. And that's like, fair. Just breaking um, point. Yeah. yeah, and then like the whole story of me getting to go stay. at Greg's because he was away at sea, um, yep. so he had a space, and then COVID happened, so he had to come back home, and then uh, yeah, so I had Damn to, it, I, 
Yeah, I fucking cracked it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, speaking of which, um, I I've already recorded a podcast with him. Um, and oh my god, he's a filthy bastard. Like we went oh, into man. some, like both of us though. Like we we I don't know, we bounce off each other and we we rile each other up. So we were just yeah. There's some things that you just I'm gonna need to edit the fuck out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's okay. Like in yeah. time, I think um, I, I don't know if I'll edit everything, but there's I, it's not it's not as if we're being like absolutely terrible but it's just large chat you know like you know you end up talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. girls and stuff and everything goes mental um, no, I'm, I'm innocent man I've been I know, you're such in a, good a relationship boy. for seven years now so I can't <laughs> I've got nothing to tell him. of course yeah I don't know <laughs> now even in comparison like you're you're saying oh I better not you know say anything about America you know my friends mm. might be listening <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like get you with Greg like, oh god fuck my legs are wide so yeah I don't Quite know right. I mean for me like I I feel like um, I'm quite accepting of saying whatever I want to say, but like I'll try and justify mm. it. Uh, I don't. I don't like if I have an ill-informed opinion. I'll say it. I'll be like, look, this is an ill-informed opinion, but this is what I'm thinking about this right now, and then say it. Uh, though it is what it is, and then see how it's reacted to. You know, um, I think that's important to like be willing yeah. to ask silly questions or. I don't know, be a bit, like, accept, willingly ignorant, but wanting to know the knowledge. You know. Yeah. Um, I think that's important. Uh, I, I just generally avoid conflict unless it's with either my girlfriend or my mum because I know I can win. <laughs> oh, you beat mum first. No way. No way, uh, dude. <laughs> not physically, obviously. Oh, no, no. Fucking... Mentally. <laughs> no, I reckon like she's got banner, man. She'd absolutely dismantle you. Oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, I, I put her through some of the worst times oh. when, when I was young, so uh, we're just getting her back now. Oh, I got you, mate. Well, she's, Luckily, she seems like I mean, a sweetheart, man. You know, I mean, what you were saying about her being integrated in Twitch um, yeah. earlier on, it's it's been the best thing because genuinely before COVID and stuff, she hadn't even seen me DJ for more than five minutes. All because, right. You know, she just didn't like obviously go to nightclubs. Like, yeah, yeah, I've sure. Been, I, I've been doing that. Like, not that you're past it, Mumverse, obviously. <laughs> no she chance. Just, she, she didn't want to like, you know, embarrass me or whatever and go like... I, I guess it's just it's one of those things but like now it's so accessible like yeah, she can watch yeah, me yeah, yeah. every single night until 4am if she wants and quite often does that's wild so, um, see like my know, mom it's, it's been really nice like to share that no I think yeah I really like I think it's so beautiful when I see you three all together like all the verses mm. like in the chat like it's like and you're just streaming over because it's it's so cool like because I'm just like it's a family it's a family affair but it is it's like you guys are all together for and it's, sure man like my mum comes in every once in a while, Stephen Lee Mummy, shout out one time. Oh really? Uh, Let's go. Yeah, like my, my little brother made her the account and asked what she wanted to be called and she said Stephen Lee Mummy. Oh I'd, I'd, I'd like oh, when I first saw her I was like, Wait, wait. <laughs> is that is that you, Mum? You should you have know? made her name Mrs. Stephen Lee. I know. So it'd be really confusing. Uh, I know, I know, I know. That's uh, I wanted to do that but you know, she like Adam made it. So it people really... call you that all the time, anyway. Mrs. I know, Stephen. only on the weekends. So, only on the weekends. Yeah, true. <laughs> no, I made that joke last night actually. Somebody but... in my chat was uh, called Sully, and somebody misspelled their name as Sally, and I said, "You're only Sally at the weekends." Ah, I got That's you. That's funny that you said that. Man. Yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, it's just like she would um kind of she would do comments like she was texting me, so she would put kisses at the end and stuff. No way. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> That's jokes. <laughs> Mom. Yeah, and it was so cute. Like, <laughs> mind you, you used to be able to like comment on vods. Yeah. Uh, like, so what happened before is Jesus. That's a throwback. Yeah, I know. It's kind of weird that like how long ago was that taken away? Like a year or something? Maybe well. Yeah, it must have been because I'd kind of forgotten. So you said. Yeah, that. yeah. Jeez. Um. So she came in and she went. She was just only in for like ten minutes and then went to go away. And everyone <laughs> just said bye. And she didn't reply, but she replied in the vod. Like, oh to, my I was God, so, so cute. cute. I know. <laughs> Oh, uh, what a hero! Yeah. Independent re replies as well. Oh man, it, it was so beautiful. I was like, oh mommy. That's class. <laughs> and then like Adam can come in, but he understands Twitch, so he's Adam G yeah, sixty nine, yeah, yeah. and he just comes yeah, in talk shit. And, yeah, he's good crack. Yeah. Uh, he's one of the founders. Uh, like yeah. just from he was Big him and his mate. Yeah, I know. I I don't I don't have many active founders. Actually, mm. like thinking about it, um, but like Taylor and him, uh, it's, uh, Adam's mate, uh, they had like a wee battle to see who could get first sub in, and Taylor That's just hilarious. bought, just got him. Um, I, I think of any of my founders that I actually have because I don't know. Um, huh. Grave, Grave is one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the I don't know, like active, not really. I think a it's couple like of years are like 
are they not like people that you've met abroad and stuff that you've not like really spoken to that much? Uh, no, uh, think... a lot of them are my little brother's mates, which is weird. Oh, right. It's just because they, my little brother, had Fortnite friends and said, "Look, uh, my my big brother's streaming." Don't we all? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we only play Fortnite. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like Robbo, he's another insane Fortnite player, and he mm. he's a founder. Uh, his brother, I used to work with in the post office, oh, Royal Mail, as a like mm. delivery driver, um, big Scott. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's weird how that works. Um, it's just one of those things. Yeah, man. It, I it's, mean, it's always Cranin's good to know. got the biggest flex like on my channel. He was my first ever sub. Hey. And he subbed when I was offline. Like oh. I got affili- I got affiliate <laughs> and he subbed, <laughs> and I wasn't even live. So I let's mean, go. He, he really laid down a marker. He's so got it, man. Yeah. I love that. See, um, one of my founders is a girl called Gabsters, and I don't know how she found me, but she did. And the weirdest thing was, this is I was like a, about 400 followers or something here, and it was when I went to America, went to a house party, I met her, and she recognized me. And it was the no weirdest way. shit, man. I was like, yo, what the fuck? And like, I, it's just gorgeous like, American girl comes up like, oh my God, I've seen you from streaming. I'm like, oh my days, all right, hi. Uh, you know, wait, what's going on? What uh, the hey, fuck, hello. Uh, and then I was like, like, really? Like, Mr. Stephen Lee, you know what that is? Like, yeah. And she was like, like, look at my phone. And she went onto her emails and looked at the, the Twitch Prime things. Bruh. I was like, oh my God, bro. Well, it was crazy. What's happen to me? Come on. <laughs> oh, I did. It, it was so oh, really? surreal. Because it was like, oh, it was, I felt like you were in a movie. Um, yeah, because like man. there was like beer pong as well, and like all the fridges were just full up with drink. Um, yeah. th- there was like free merch as well. It literally felt like oh, a, one of those American Pie things. Um, yeah, literally, I, I, like staged, I, I, like make this as American as possible. I kept looking but... for the cameras, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, it was weird. It was weird stuff. And then I remember True and I. Uh, I was with True and Toasty as well. And then uh, True and I fucked off to another party because we heard someone like fuck it. Because like, we actually we went for a pee. Um, because there was only <laughs> one bathroom. We're like fuck it, just pee in the garden, you know, like fucking proper Scottish Standard. style, you know. Yep. Fucking yep. Pu- pushing aside the house. And then we're like, oh, there's, there's some more music down there. So let's uh, go have a gander. And we walked in, and it was like a parking lot that I just turned into a party. You know, one that of those like proper sick. American shit, dude. Um, but then when we rocked up, like everyone was like twelve. <laughs> oh my it was God. so weird. Well, it was yeah. like the equivalent of Scottish goths dancing in the fucking yeah, um, man. Underpass. It was so odd. But in America as well, like it's twenty-one to drink, right? So yeah, their twelves like over fifteen. I don't know. So like, yeah. but you could still tell they were super young, and it was just cringe. It was like uh, they're, they're the one I was twenty-one when I went to America, like you know, right on age. So, um, but they Can't didn't. I remember whenever I bought beer, uh, they wouldn't believe my driver's license because it was from the UK. Really? Yeah. I was like, fuck you, dude. They thought you'd forged an international <laughs> driver's license. <laughs> exactly. And developed an amazing West Coast. <laughs> I know, I know. So. It's all an act, mate. All an Fuck's act. Fuck's sake. Yeah. Um, but the thing was weird as well. I don't know what it's like in New York, but um, the tax, like, they don't, they add the tax at the end. So. Mm. Like all the prices you see are not real. Catches you, catches yeah. you off guard. Yeah, I, and I, I was I so annoying. I can't remember how that worked. I, I don't know what the York. percentage is in California, but it was like I don't know twenty percent or something, maybe seventy. I can't remember it was something like that. But like I remember, I went to buy a crate of beer that was like eighteen dollars or something, um, so yeah. I could pay for it with a twenty dollar uh, like note. Um, and I went to hand it over, and the guy said, "That's not enough." I was like, "Yeah, really? fucking is." <laughs> I can count, you know. And then he's like, "No, no tax, dude. It's like twenty, like fifty or something." I was like, "All right." Yeah. Shit. I, I, I think the tax was included in New York, but I might stand right. corrected on that. It's but, so much easier. I don't understand why would you? I don't know. It's just I weird to know. add at the end. Americans are funny with numbers and weights and shit, dude. So distance and a lot. So that's <laughs> what it is. Oh, but yeah, well, man. I gotta do a, a little plug for you, man, because uh, I've got my next event coming up. Oh ho! So I, I, I was a bit, I was actually a bit of ash. What's your next event oh, happening? Yeah, yeah. So it's a little exclusive because it doesn't actually get announced till tomorrow. So oh, let's I go. I don't know. I don't know when you're putting this out. But, I, w- um, I was going to do it tonight, but it might be too late. I don't know. Ah, well, it's up to you. Um, so yeah, basically, I um, got contacted by this events company in Canada. Let's go. Um, called King Queen Events. Right. And um, they're partnering up with another Canadian company called Hypnotic Events. Right. And they're putting on a Valentine's Day weekend show Ooh. on Twitch. Okay. So it expands over two days. And um, Valentine's Day this year falls on a Sunday, the 14th. Mm. So the event is um, Saturday the 13th and Sunday the 14th. Okay. And I'm going to be playing on the Sunday. Let's so go. On Valentine's Day. So don't worry, there's no... Um, sexy horny songs 
Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, you get, like... you got to have, like, the toilet song. Fucking on the toilet! <laughs> <laughs> I'm horny. Yeah. <laughs> But um, I don't know. I might slide one in just for the meme now. Yeah, but, you should, man. Um, that would be hilarious. Yeah, a little boom, boom, day boom, set. boom. I want you in my. <laughs> <laughs> Classic yeah, it yeah, that's right. The banger. Sorry, sorry, I'm ruining your. Um, <laughs> no, don't, don't apologize. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be awesome. Valentine's yeah, yeah. Day, um, and it's gonna be on their channel, so King Queen Events. Yeah. Um, and they are based in Canada, and they often have um big big shows like they have djs much much bigger than me on um regularly. absolutely brilliant man so really looking forward to that there's about six of us playing each day super um, so i've already networked with a whole bunch of people from uh out with the uk like a lot of them they support local djs and then put like a big dj on afterwards so they like showcase local talent um, right kind of thing mm-hmm. um which is really great and yeah that really is excited for it. Absolutely sensational, man. I'll need to, I'll post it out on the day as well or the day before yeah. or whatever just so that people can see it as well. I'll put it in the Discord. Discord's always a good place, like, um, just to, like, if someone clicks on general chat and they see that mm. it's there, it's just, like, it's yeah. a nice kind of way to, like, remind people. Um, but yeah, 100%, well, man. Uh, like, thank you for letting us know. We should be like, no take problem. a sneak peek. <laughs> like I say, the, the event itself gets announced tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll be getting, like, all the marketing kind of stuff, like the yeah, posters sure. and all that stuff to put out. So Absolutely. Uh, I can send you those tomorrow once I get them. Yeah, man, I'd love to help you, for sure. Sweet. But there's, like, a, a Facebook event and stuff, so if everyone's on there, they can, you know, get ah, a link yeah, from, yeah, yeah. from my server or whatever, if they're interested. Got it's you. It's going to be dope. Brilliant, man. Dude, I'm, I'm so proud of you. Like, you're, you're actually making so so much great networking. Uh, Thank you, man. You're, you're really getting seen, and, like, uh, you so deserve it, bro. Like, uh, I'm just grateful that you're actually, you know, making waves, making it happen. I'm you loving know? it, man. Like, yeah, just, dude. Hard work's great. paying off. Yeah, like like you say, you know, it's all about the like global reach and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, Canada, like, come on. Yeah, man. I know. It's awesome. I think so can- good. Canadians, man. So, God, I love them. really looking forward to that. Yeah, dude. Um, it's great. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Fuck, Valentine's. Ooh. I know, clear, clear your diaries, folks. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, I'm just such a stud, bro. I think I might be feeling that, you know? I mean, come on, single people, you can't be going out. I mean, <laughs> like True. traffic light parties and stuff. There's none of those this year, so. <laughs> oh, gutted. Gutted. Yeah, God. you just have to put up with my face instead. That's amazing. No, like, right, right on, bro. That's, that's amazing. Like, great stuff. So, when are you next streaming? When's your next? Uh, next stream is Tuesday. Yeah. So 9 p.m. till 1 GMT. Okay. Great stuff. So Tuesday 9 p.m. Really looking forward to that. No, that's it. And you say, what What did you say was like your genre for Tuesday? <laughs> yeah, so it's like everything under the house umbrella. Right, so right, right. So everything from like deep and tropical house right through to future house, base house. Great stuff. Tech house and techno. Absolute stalker. They are, man. Any any parting words you, you got? Or is that it? You got your Valentine's good for? I don't have too much inspiring to say, so... Oh, just you being here is inspiring, dude, your story. Hey. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Honestly, Thank like, you. you've um, only just begun. Me. No, 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 no. Like, uh, I've always wanted, like, to create a podcast, and you were one of the first people that came to mind, man. I'm telling you. Thank you, you man. Um, Appreciate that. No, for sure. I need to get you and Joe verse on at the same time at some point. Yeah, I think that'll, that'll, that'll be, be a lot of fun. You know, I think you, you're with him for air time for sure. <laughs> I think your banter would be unreal. You know, yeah, but I, I just want to like, like sit back and see you guys around like, the piss at each other. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that that'd be great. Funnily enough, actually, I had planned because I went home for Christmas on mm. Christmas Day mm. before the new kind of regulations got put in. I had planned a big stream with Joe, like together, both ah. of us sitting down and doing a just chatting thing and just kind of going through like. You know, That'd how be we cool. grew up and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. I really wanted to do that on Christmas, just as like a, because I guess people would have less plans this right. year. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. And even if people just had like twenty minutes, you know, to spare, they could just pop in. Because I know that I've always got time on Christmas Day where I'm hella bored. Yeah, sure. So, I wanted to kind of give people that knew Joe a place to find out more about me, and people that knew me to know more about Joe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and just like our relationship, because it's changed so much, mm. especially like since I left uh, home. Right. Um, you feel you've gotten closer? You 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, we've always been really close. Like, mm. as much as we're at each other's throats, we've, we've genuinely yeah, I... always been close. Like, there's never really been a time where... Brothers, man. We, we, yeah, we can't stand each other's presence. So mm. that's good. Like, <laughs> I'm blessed. Because I know, you know, it's not always that easy. Yeah. No, I, um, I, I totally understand that side. You know, you, I understand yeah. both the, the love and the hate. Like, it's there. It's not hate, though. It's like, I don't know, frustration. Like, I'm a middle yeah. child. So... yeah. I, well, I've I'm always old, I'm the oldest, so I'm okay. There you are. So you're firstborn, can't you know? Yeah. Like you're you're like the first baby. So you like because like my my big brother's the first the first child, and then my little brother's the baby. I'm just in the middle, like hey, mm. I do the streaming, you know? I just <laughs> like I don't like who am I? So I don't know. I think that's why I'm. I think I'm the most like out there content wise. Mm. Um, I don't know, like, Richie's just more a career-based guy, and, I mean, Adam's looking to the Merchant Navy and stuff, and he does right. music as well, so I suppose he's creative in some regard. Um, but, yeah, like, Adam and I were the gamers, like, you know, playing yeah. Halo and yeah, Call of Duty and stuff. Um, mm. Like, he literally tweeted recently, just, like, just trying to get back to playing Halo 3 Forge with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, dude. Because like, he used to, um, whenever he was chased on uh, Infected, he would actually mm. run, like, in real life, like, on the seat. Like, he'd, like, no kick way. his feet. Yeah. Unreal. <laughs> it was so cute. I the, mean, we all do uh, that little sway when you're, like, trying to get around the corner, but I've never oh, gone yeah. that far. D- yeah, whenever I shoot a gun on court, I, like, like use the like, chicken neck. You know, dink, like, mm, I yep, push my head yep. forward. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I mean, Joe, Joe as the younger brother, didn't suffer too much, but cause, especially because he's, like, made an absolute recovery on everything that I thought I had over him. So, like, <laughs> I used to definitely be, like, the stonking gamer, but he's, like, long surpassed me on that now. Mm. Like... He, he would blow me out of the water on anything. Yeah, and he's a he's a sensational FPS gamer. Dude. Even like height, like I used to be the tallest, and he just came out of nowhere with that. <laughs> I mean, luck, luckily he can't DJ yet. So yeah, I'm you're the better DJ. Fucking, yeah, exactly. Start doing that next year, just because he can. Yeah, well, Joe's not getting bit by Canada, man. Don't worry. No, true, true. <laughs> but um, nah, yeah, for real. Like super proud of him. <laughs> not yet, does, though. So. I mean, he's fucking. He's getting there. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I know he'll be performing. Like, yeah. Hopefully one day. So. No, oh, it's amazing. I'm so I'm so glad that he's like really finding this creative streak too. Like, you you got a very creative family and Monverse has done mm. so well to keep you guys together and motivated. Like keeps um, us in check, man. Yeah, for sure. Like whenever I see her and like um I don't know, we're having like a like a great like stream like at yours or whatever. Like I always say that. I just like add her and just say, Yo, like thank you for making the boys, you know? Because <laughs> she really has. You know I mean it's like it's one of the first topics of conversation for people sometimes when they come in. They're like, how's Mumverse? Or is Mumverse here? Like, yeah, yeah. It's great. Like, people genuinely care. And yeah, man. I think she loves that. I mean, most of the time she's just, like, asking for grime in the chat <laughs> rather than talking to people. I love she's that, like, when dude. are you playing Storms? You fucking <laughs> love Stormzy, man. Like, That's it. Yo, Joe's going to get that hook up, man. And then, like, she's going to get a medium out with, like, uh, some sick pictures. You know? I think she'd melt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great, bro. Crazy. Love it. Anyway, yeah. thank you very much, Janvers, for coming you, on, man. Uh, Talk forever. Yeah, yeah, no, I'd like I'd love to have you on again at another another point in the future. Anytime. Thank you for being my second guest ever. It's always good to get someone that uh also streams quite significantly and you know, ha- isn't like a totally different feel for me. Like it's it really shows the the breadth of streaming and how much you can do for it, you know. So I really thank do appreciate you, it, man. And, I appreciate uh, you. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate it, and thank you for uh, you know sorting out the microphone, getting through oh, all God. that. Dude. Next, next time I'm on, it'll be a bit easier, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, but it, you sound perfect. Uh, like I don't think there's any audio issues here. Um, got okay, a good, 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 decent podcast. So yeah, thank you, all my right. guy. Big love. Yeah, big love to you too. Peace mate. out, guys. Catch you. Bye bye.